There we go. And welcome everybody to this highly professional podcast hosted by nothing but pure professionals. You can tell because I have a collar. Professional. <laughs> welcome everybody. It is the Gamers Ledge podcast brought to you by us and you, our Patreon subscribers. Uh, tonight we will be doing a podcast sans Mark. Ah, what do we do? It's crazy. It's insane. And for some reason it looks like the Twitch chat is not working. Why does everything hate me? Meh. All right. We'll figure that out. Maybe it's working. Um, all right. So, uh, tonight we have with us the wonderful, the ineffable, the kind of been really weird light tonight. Dave. Yeah, I don't look. I almost forgot about this. So. <laughs> it looks like you're under like a really, really weak sun lamp. Well, I have like there's like a um, like a colored glass shade over the light, or no, I have it dimmed. Ah, because I don't like bright lights, much like a Mogawai. Yeah, because they make me angry, and <laughs> we wouldn't want you angry. Because then you might smash your computer, and then... I wouldn't do that. Brain. I need the computer. <laughs> but... Well, I'm glad you didn't forget about us, because as you see from our original cast uh, list, we have shrunk considerably. Yeah, went from yeah. no one to just us. <laughs> I was thinking at first, I was just like, eh, if I just act like I fell asleep and just continue watching Letter Denny, I could... <laughs> You know, they got enough people. I, I, I did invite Ian, but he, he declined. He had to, he has a mandate tonight, so uh he, he, he decided he he wouldn't come join us tonight. Oh, that would be fun. That would be. I really do want to get him on. I told him he could bring his mandate with and and he said no, so <laughs> I mean it's the two that do the stream. I don't know if either of you have ever watched their gaming stream that they do. Uh, I have actually on I... Saturday nights. It was it was yeah. Ian and Bags. So I, I I think those two would do great. I, you know, we might have to kick Keegan out because the content might get a little too mature for his pu pure. I, pure I'm years. over eighteen, dude. <laughs> yeah, not like you're the one bringing up, you know, not, porn not in his the mind. Last week or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, but anyway, um, so uh, and also as uh, we've kind of alluded to and spoke around, we have with us tonight, Mr. Keegan. How are you today, Mr. Keegan? Good. Hello. All right, so I would say we have a chock full show tonight, but I really have no idea. I kind of kind of grabbed this last minute, so I don't have a plan. So we're just, you know, professional. We're gonna we're gonna wing this like professionals. It's worked for me for the last forty years. Uh, hopefully, it'll work for a few more. Uh, Adaptive Play hosted the channel to null viewers. I have no idea what that means. Russians. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh oh, Dave went all pixels. Uh -oh. Yeah, Dave, what um, did you do? Screen, his I normal think... screen's fine, but that screen is not fine. Well, his normal screen yeah, for me isn't fine, so that must be. Uh. All I know is after tomorrow, um, my internet's going to be fixed. Well, well sure. that, that's always good. We're going to have a, a gigabit connection Can I... soon. Can I do anything to help alleviate this? Well, the thing is that my it's not my connection. Because <laughs> my connection's still fine. I, I... Yeah, no, I'm, I don't know what caused that. That's what I. Uh, that's why I'm wondering if there's something I can do on my side. But um, can you turn your camera off and on? Just see if it resets the connection. Uh... Again, professionals. Mr. J. Nice hosted the channel to null viewers. Where's the... I can mute. Um, it should be under next to leave call. There's the camera button. You can turn on, turn off to the left of the leave call button, which should be right underneath somebody's picture. Ah, okay. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Now you're a little thingy. There we are. Okay. Hey, okay. That's I don't know what... Great. That was weird. We'll, we'll, we'll say it was Twitch. We'll say it not Twitch. We'll say it's Discord's fault because... It's Discord's fault. That, that alleviates... Oh, somebody's fault. watching the stream. Yeah, I was just making sure it was live because <laughs> right. uh, one of my uh, 
swim team friends who asked when it was live when we were live, so I was just making sure it was live. <laughs> and now Keegan has stopped moving. We can hear you just fine, but your video has stopped. <laughs> so why don't you kill your camera and, and turn it back on, and then hopefully we'll be... Uh, uh, Drogadin said, your picture looked better before, Dave. Nice. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that because it's true. <laughs> and that's Keegan's moving was, again. That's no. how I was actually acting, playing dumb. Frozen in gas. <clears throat> nope, there we go. Not, okay, we're just going to continue. We can hear everybody. The The video seems to be for schnucked tonight. I don't know what's going on. It's probably my computer. I didn't reboot it before taking this task on. So um, nah, it doesn't look like it's taxed and my network speed is fine. So I have no idea what's going on. But we're stuck with smiling Keegan. But that's what he does most of the time anyway is smile. So we'll just go with it. Yep. All right. So gentle frogs. Uh, what have you been up to? And let's start with the Dave, because I think it's been the longest since he's been here. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I've done stuff. I've, I've played stuff. I've downloaded stuff. That is always um, fun to play the download game. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've, I've definitely downloaded some stuff. Um, but I haven't, there's stuff that I haven't played that I've downloaded. Um, there's stuff that I've rediscovered since buying my son switch and switching over and like, yeah. So like he's got a switch. So like I kind of reloaded a new switch and I took over the new switch. So like I was rediscovering old games that I had on there. Like, you know, I was playing Luminez again. Um, a lot of stuff lately has been playing games with my son. It's always good. Now, which is uh, real weird because he's actually like really starting to get it now. So he's better <clears> than <throat> you is what you're saying. Not quite. I still have to help out, you know, sometimes, but it's it's starting to help out a lot less, a lot faster than I expected. Um, and right now he's old playing. Is he now? He's four, four and a half. Four and a half. I was going to say, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, so right now we made the jump to Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah. Jump, so, jump all the way. Yeah, so he was playing, I started him, like originally, I started him on like Pac-Man. Like, you know, really old school stuff. Right. And then um, the original Mario Brothers, not the not the Super Mario Brothers, the original Mario Brothers arcade game, you know. The, 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 yeah, the pipes and the turtles. Yeah, and the, yeah. you know, just the one screen, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And loops. <clears throat> yeah. Getting him used to, like, you know, jumping around and who Mario is and all that kind of stuff. Then progressed to the original Mario Brothers on, like, the little NES classic thing. Um, then played a little of the Super Mario, or from the Super NES Mario Brothers. You know, just kind of, like, worked <clears throat> the way up, you know, through some real quick. Um, then he started playing stuff on the Switch. So I was playing the, you know, the re-release of the, they had a, they had a Super Mario Brothers on there and Yoshi's World. Um, like, that game. And Yoshi's World is where it really started taking to it. <clears throat> so that was cool, just watching, like, you know, the, the progression from, like, you know, starting from the beginning and, like, you know, kind of, like, you know, working your way through the concepts and stuff and then, like, really applying them in, like, Yoshi's world because then there was, like, puzzle elements to it and he was he was figuring all the stuff out. I'm like, nice. Like, this is pretty cool watching his little brain work and everything. And um, so then we played this. Uh, they did a like, re-release of the Wii U Mario Brothers game and we played through that, you know, and he was actually, like, you know, beating like you know the bowsers and everything like that like the bowser kids and all that kind of stuff like he was doing the boss battles and everything and they have easy modes in the games now you know right so like you know he's able to, there's leeway in it but there was a lot of times where he didn't like you know he could have done it with the regular stuff so it was like it was pretty neat just watching that so then i was just like he found the amiibo for the uh, the wedding mario mm -hmm. amiibos and the bowsers and stuff and he was like, what is this from? And he was like, I want to play this game. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I was like, well, we'll jump into that and see what happens. And um, so we started playing Super Mario Odyssey. And the dude took to it. Like, he's got the concepts down, the taking over stuff, you know, with the hats and everything. And he was just running with it. And, There's um, one glaring omission in that list. You didn't, you didn't have him play Super Mario Sunshine. 
There's no easy way to do that right now. You don't have a GameCube? You have every other Nintendo system known to man. I, I do, but I don't have it hooked up, and I don't have an easy <laughs> way to hook it up to, you know, a yeah, modern, modern TV. Modern TV with none of the right kind of plugs. Yeah, I mean, I do have an old TV that I'm saving just for that stuff. So, you know, that, that'll that probably happen someday, I'm sure, but... <laughs> You know, uh, as so right I, I wasn't sure how you would go with that because some people really, really, really hate Sunshine. It's one of my favorites, and at least of the 3D Mario's. And some people really, really, really hate that game. Which one was Sunshine? Was that the one with the water thing? That was the one with yeah. the water jetpack. Yeah, mm. water backpack. I'm, I'm only a little iffy on that because they just the camera just fought you. They're, they're, the camera was not always the best, but I it. Yeah, of the three D Mario's, that's the one that clicked with me the best. I remember I playing that game a lot, but I never got past. That. I think the farthest I got was beating a uh, uh, Piranha Plant. So basically, the first major. Yeah, that's like but, the first thing. But you were like five when that game came out. So yeah, that was actually pretty and significant. We replayed, <laughs> we replayed that like first area like fifteen billion times, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I don't remember why. Oh, thank you, Mr. J. Nice. Yeah. Hey, um, like I guess I used to, you know, think that too. I was like, oh, well, like you know, there's only five. At four and a half, I'm sitting there watching them figuring out boss battles in Super Mario Odyssey, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, way to go, little dude. You know, takes him a little bit of time and everything, but you know, he's got easy mode on, but it's still like, you know, yeah. you still, you know. It, you're not invulnerable in that, you know, the way they have it set. Yeah. But um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a nice modern platformer. Now I don't like the way Odyssey controls. It's a personal thing. I think it's way too slippery and floaty, but that's, that's my take. Um, uh, I mean, all right. I, I guess I can see that at, at points, but, but you know, it's, although, it's, it's not a bad was, game. It's just, I was dying laughing about the, the floaty thing. Cause I thought I was like, I was about, I was trying to tell him to like, you know, the, the member of the metro, the city. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're running through that, and there's, a, the, there's those one little places where they have, like, the really tiny girders that are, like, turning, but they're, like, real thin, like, as you're doing, like, the sca it's like scaffolding yeah, in, yeah. like, between buildings. He just, like, ran up and ran straight across it and, like, you know, jumped <laughs> off it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> the confidence was... and, uh, and the dexterity of, of small brains. Yes. Yeah, that's where, like, that no fear comes into play. You know, meanwhile, I'm, like, you know, edging. Just, along. Yeah, I'm just, like, you know, inching the joystick, you know, for just a tiny bit, just to walk across it slowly. I'm, like, yeah, and once you get once you get that fear in you, you know, once you know what these video games are all about. But the, um, <laughs> so that was fun. So it's been a lot of, like, stuff like that with them. That's um, awesome. Yeah, me personally, um, like I said, I was playing some Luminez. Um, I was playing, uh, uh, um, Capcom did this like beat em up bundle a little while ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I was playing some like random games in that, um, they released a, a great, um, they had a, a sale on Sonic games and they did like a Sega ages, Sonic the Hedgehog, like the original Genesis one, um, that has some like added features to it. So like, you know, I picked that up for like whatever three bucks whatever it was are you taking alex to go see the movie allegedly um, it doesn't suck yeah apparently it does not suck um i know unfortunately it's coming out like when um there's a pixar movie um that i'd rather see so it's, well, it's probably it's gonna end up being out now it came out last weekend one word's already out yeah damn it <laughs> I was wondering why I saw so many articles about it this week. <laughs> <laughs> what so that's was... probably that's going to be the next theater one. Um, so that'll, I guess that'll probably be next week. And the the Pixar one you're talking about is uh, what's it called? Uh, but it's the Tom uh, yeah, Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, onward. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be like crying my eyes out in that theater. I'm sure because it's all about like you know seeing your dead dad for like one more day, and I'm like. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 they do do a little too well with the tear jerkers. Um, oh, yeah. I still have to watch uh, Toy Story 4. Uh, that's on Disney Plus now, and I haven't gotten it. It's really good. Um, we, we did see that in the theater, and uh, 
I did actually pick it up when it came out on on Blu-ray um, for Alex because he was excited for it, nice. and um, and yeah, that that actually it was actually a really good send off. There's a lot of great stuff in there. Nice. The new character is awesome. I I never thought of one sequel was a good idea, and they proved me wrong. And then I thought for sure two sequels was just a terrible idea. There was no way, and three is probably the best of the ones that I've seen. Yeah. And then four, it's like, okay, come on, guys. You're really, really, really pushing your luck here. And it sounds against all odds. It, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I mean, but they also, like, none of it was rushed. I mean, you realize how long these movies have been going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean. But they managed to do one decent Cars movie and then two terrible Cars movies. So, you know. Was the third one terrible? I never saw it yet. I, that's what I heard. I, have, I, I haven't even made it all the way through the second one. <laughs> second one i saw once and i was just like uh um, it's a shame because I, I know like people like you know crapped on the first cars movie but i, I like the it. first cars movie i thought it was yeah, good i thought it was fine the um but the uh but yeah so uh, i am i'm really looking forward to onward um so that should be good the uh, what else we're cord cutting this weekend um Ooh, so big changes afoot yeah well they finally you know you know, they, they annoyed my wife uh, to the point where she was just like, okay, you know, let's get rid of them. And so we're like, cool. All right. You know, so we're going to just do internet. We were, we're switching internet companies, you know, because like they really annoyed her. So like, you know, we're just done with them, um, you know, switching over. But it's good because I'm going back to the place where I can buy my own equipment, you know, so that's going to save money there. It's all about like saving money at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the um, and we're doing Hulu Live, you know, to get the live channels and stuff. Right. And uh, so the cool thing about that is now I have Hulu. Um, so the first thing I did was I jumped on. I started watching like you know Rick and Morty because that's where they all live. And um, I started watching that Letterkenny show uh, tonight. I've 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 heard a mention of it, but I have no idea what what it really is, and I I don't think. Just just what little I know of it and the screenshots I've seen for it, I'm pretty sure it's not for me, so I haven't really tried to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's basically about like a real like small um, rural town in Canada. Is is basically, you know, that follows characters around from that kind of thing. Right. And to me it's hilarious. I'm like dying just on the intro of it. Um but I mean, I can see it not being your cup of tea. But it's it's it definitely left up to the hype that you know people were giving it around me. Yeah, and that just got renewed for like eighteen more seasons or something too, didn't it? I have no idea. I seem to I'm remember just, Ian saying something about that. But I'm just like watching stuff. So. So yeah, we almost did the cord cutting thing last weekend, um, but when we wow. called when we called the cancel, they basically price matched, and I was like okay, well, it was really only a cost thing. It wasn't really a service thing. I don't have a problem with the service. Right. So well, that's, that's exactly what happened um, at first. You know, my wife talked to them and, you know, they said like, oh, okay, well, we'll do this. And we were just like, you know, we had like, they had like a bunch of movie channels like on there. So we're just like, you know, we don't need the movie channels anymore. Just get rid of the movie channels. So, she said that over the phone. She was like, oh, I don't need to move a channel to so get rid of that. And what they did was they dropped it down to, like, the lowest TV package mm, they have. Right. So it took away all the channels she actually watches. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, like, a news channel she watches that was not on it. <laughs> wow. And she's just like, Oof. it's just a news channel. Like, they really put that in an upper tier package. Um, but that's just, you know, how they roll. So, you know, yeah. that, that, that annoyed her and like, they didn't, they weren't clear about it at all. And they were going to charge us like 150 bucks to upgrade our internet and wow. you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's just like, no, you should just be upgrading this stuff because the equipment's been there for, you know, six, seven years, you know, right. it's, it's time to upgrade it, but you know how they are. They're just, oh, yeah. yep. Yeah, the only bad thing about our service right now is it, uh, doesn't have the sports option. So, uh, mm. anytime there's a Monday night game I want to watch, I have to find someone to uh, watch their ESPN because I, I don't, I can't get ESPN. I could subscribe to it, but I don't watch enough of anything that's on there to care, so I don't. <laughs> um, 
but yeah so uh any, anything else going on or uh sure tons um watching that lego master series of course is that you still still holding up i i cannot bring myself to watch it i just i just can't it's not bad i mean for what it is i mean i'm not like you know i wish they showed more of them actually like building yeah it seems like you know they they play around with a lot of the reality game show kind of stuff right you know a little more than they should um but the the end result of everything you know is still pretty impressive is, is it you at know? least a more positive show where there's not a lot of like backstabbing and that kind of stuff going on and oh yeah more yeah positive yeah. and stuff yeah it's totally about like and that's kind of what's keeping me watching is i like the people on the show actually mm. um and even funny it's even funny like there was one guy that was like being a jerk like in the first couple episodes to his partner and and they literally like said like dude you need to stop <laughs> you know? and they worked together on the last one and like they were one of the top people like after they just start working together and were more positive about it there's like you know there's like a dude and his dad and like you just want to like hug him every time you see him like they're just having such a good time you know, there's yeah, there's just all kinds of like good stuff on there. It's all. Do positive. any of them seem like plants, or do they all seem pretty genuine? Um, yeah, they definitely seem genuine. Yeah. Um, I, I know there's like people that were in like um, Facebook groups that I belong to that are on the show that you know were picked for it and everything. And there's some some definitely high quality builders on the show. So cool. You know they 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 do have some decent people. Cool. I suppose we should take this point in time to plug the uh, the, the the now you can pre-order set the ship from uh, Mandalorian. Well, yeah, Razor Crest. So that is now, uh, which I thought was the model of the ship. I don't know that the ship actually has a name. He doesn't seem like the kind of person that would necessarily name his ship. So I think that I think that's actually like the the model of the ship is. Um, but uh yep it's 130 dollars which is, is a little steep for what it is um but you know there's 800 dollars millennium falcon so what are you gonna do yeah <laughs> well, they, it's it's funny they do that and um it's funny when, when you search on a website for mandalorian um if you just like go on the, the lego shop website and you pull up and you just put in like mandalorian to just like find the set You'll find it, and another thing you'll find in there is a a set that's out of print, and it was actually from Rebels, and it was another hundred and thirty dollars set that was the uh, the Tie Fighter carrier. Oh, do you remember that ship? Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know they made a set of that. I don't remember that. They made that. Wow. And it was one hundred and thirty dollars, and um, it was weird because it was like out of scale, but it had like minifigures. You know, right, right. And the Tie Fighters were just like little small, like right, you know, the model micro tire. ones, yeah. Yeah. Um. So, in the end, it was actually it was a cool set. I love the model and everything. I love like you know. But the annoying thing about it is, I was going to pass on it, but it's the only set that had Sabine with her Mandalorian helmet. Ah. Oh really? And they put her in a damn one hundred and thirty dollars set. They play, some, probably, they play some dirty games with those minifigs. They do. They do. They do. And that's what's really got me over the years of, you know, doing stuff like that. It's just like they sneak that one figure in that either is not available anywhere else or, you know, the only place you're going to, you know, the only one that's available, the, the complete and, and, like, and it's always something that makes almost no sense. Like, why would this character be with this set? Do they pull that same crud with the Marvel stuff? I don't really pay attention to the Marvel yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah, I know they yeah, pulled the they, crud with the Infinity Gauntlet, but they did they know anything with the Infinity Gauntlet? But the first round, I was actually fine. You know, I get it. The first round they went through, and like each set came with its a, a, a different stone. So, and they had all the sets. Like each set had one stone of it, so it was like kind of mimicking the quest. Right. You know, the collect everything fine that fits into the story at least i was okay with that the last round they did where they actually have um well they did it twice so they did a set that has um you know uh, you know has thanos in it with the with the regular infinity gauntlet and then they did another set recently 
with the Hulk, with the Stark Gauntlet, and they didn't include all the gems in those sets. So, like, I had extra because, like, you know, the gems come in, like, a four-pack. Like, they have, like, a little ring, and there's, like, four of each gem, like, on the thing. Which is cool because they're really small, and if you lose them, you know, whatever. But they didn't include all of them in there for, like, the sets where it should have had all the gems. And I'm like, really? That's just stingy. Like, there's... That doesn't even make sense story-wise or anything. So, that was just annoying. Mm -hmm. So, I had extra to fill it out, but... It was just annoying that I had to do that. I, I gotta yeah. wonder if they're on the verge of cutting licensed content. Like if they're coming up to the end of contracts and they're just going to stop because they seem to be just getting out of hand. Oh, I mean, but I don't know that any of their original stuff aside from Ninjago, which keeps going somehow. Keep, they keep doing fresh stuff with it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that does sell. So it's not like everything is like, you know, fail. like sometimes they try new stuff that it doesn't, you know, work. Yeah, I don't know uh, if this mystery thing with the whole v- AR element is going well or not. I haven't really seen anything about that. I haven't heard anything about it. However, it's a shame because some of the sets are really cool. I actually did pick up a, um, a couple of the sets just out of curiosity. Not yeah. that I even play the game just because the sets look neat. Right. And I got one for Alex that was like a... It was kind of like a shipwreck, and there's like, you know, there's like a you know a classic kind of like ship captain with the with the yellow raincoat kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and he's got like it, yeah. he's got like tentacles and stuff hanging off him when he comes into it when he turns into a monster and everything. Right, right. And like the ship actually can either be a ship or it can break, and like there's like a little stand you can put him in, like you know, it's like the shipwreck. So like it's a shame because the sets are really well designed and cool. Um. But, you know, they have to take chances on stuff. Some things stick. I mean, Ninjago was a complete risk when they first did that, and look what happened there. So yeah. they're going to keep trying stuff. Yeah. No, then, then they should. They should keep doing their own IP. I mean, if they stop doing licensed stuff at this point, it wouldn't wouldn't kill me because, well, I'm not buying anything anymore. But, yeah. uh, you know, it just it, it seems like it's kind of run its course. The, the sets aren't as good a lot of the times there's a lot of there's a lot of garbage in this last round yeah and i don't know they're hurting again too i think aren't they they're not doing so great financially again i mean i think they're doing fine financially but i think they kind of like spread themselves thin i think they need to you know pull back a little bit again yeah so it's kind of one of those things but the yeah because it's like like if you look at the star wars sets they did this round there's a lot of like goofy stuff in there. They did like uh, some like real like little kids kind of ideas, and the sets are like you know kind of like cheap looking, but they have like you know firing missiles and targets and stuff. Like there's, yeah. they're they're trying some different ideas with them, and like you know they're the piece counts like low, you know, in those, but then they don't really do anything. You know, there's the the market's probably like the adult collectors for those for the most part. Yeah, you know, so. I mean, obviously, they're the ones buying the eight hundred dollar Millennium Falcon. So, it still kills me. Keegan doesn't even have an eight hundred dollar Millennium Falcon. I'm not gonna lie, it was the greatest experience of my life. <laughs> <laughs> not his wedding, not the birth of his child, not not his child beating a Koopa boss for the aside, first time. Aside from that, come on. <laughs> it's it's a, talking as far as like geek level stuff. Oh, I mean, okay, okay, okay. That was like you know because it was just like that was like my whole childhood and spending time with my dad and all that kind of stuff, just all wrapped in one. Thing. Thing. Big Lego. Yeah. 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 And it was just, and it's an awesome set, and the build is incredible. And it just took, I dragged it out for like 50 some hours. Like, I mean, I really like savored it too. Like, that was, it was did just you, real nice. Did you make sure that the word Lego on each piece was facing the same way so it's all nice and symmetrical? Not with that many pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually tried that. I contemplated it once, and I'm like, no. Um, I don't do that, but there is one crazy thing I do. You like whenever all the pieces. Well, no, that's not crazy. A lot of people do that. <laughs> it's um, kind of crazy. No, it's not crazy. I'll do it on larger sets. 
Well, I pretty much do it for everything. So like not You sort your M and M's too, don't you? I did do that. Because the blue ones taste better. <laughs> Let's taste better. <laughs> I, I I think they all taste the same for M and M's. That's because you don't have a refined palate. You're young. It's okay. But when you refine your palate over time, you realize the blue ones do taste best, followed by green, then red, then yellow, orange, brown. Hmm. You have some weird synesthesia stuff going on there, my friend, but I do. That, that, that's fine. Um. You don't actually have synesthesia, do you? Because I don't think that's ever come up. Do I don't you, think. Do you, do you maybe. taste colors and hear sound or hear hear temperatures? Or I, I don't know exactly. I'm making it would definitely sense. explain some stuff, and it would also explain <laughs> my love for um, Mizuguchi games. That's the guy that did Luminous, right? I think so. That sounds right. Yeah. I'm tired you and a little color. tipsy, so but he's all in that synesthesia kind of thing, sure, with like you know, res and all that stuff. The flow state, god, I love that guy, he makes some cool stuff. I do, I do need to get a uh, Tetris effect sometime because that was that. that, that oh, was that fun. game's fantastic! Oh, but, you know what sucks? So, my original PSP, uh, uh-huh. well, not my original, I guess the. Remember when I got the electric blue one? Right, right, right. So I was down in the basement cleaning some stuff, and I found it, and I was just like, oh, I was like, let me grab this, and I'll let me find the charger, and I'll, I'll fire it up. And I took it out just to look at it to see what game was in it, and um, I noticed the battery hatch was, like, popped off. Oh, you had the exploded battery. Yeah, well, when did that become a thing? I don't know, about four or five years ago was the first I heard of it. I need to get a new battery, and then I'm not going to be able to, am I? You might. Uh, um, likely. I mean, you're, you're probably going to be paying a premium for it, though. Oh, well, friggin'. I mean, you buy $800 Lego sets, so you know a $100 battery shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, first of all, it was a $400 Lego set. No, it was an $800 Lego set. It, you just only exchanged $400 of cash for it. You had $400 of other value that you could have spent on other things. So, still $800. <laughs> Still, I only had to pay $400 for it. Well, then in that case, my piece 4 is free. <laughs> but, yeah, so. Well, that's upsetting. But it really upset me because, like, I opened up the, the thing and what game and what game do you think was in it? Uh, well, it was probably Luminous. Right. Yeah, <laughs> the original. And I was like, oh, man, I really want to play the original. You is know, that the only for, PSP you have left, or is that just the only one you you just because that was the convenient one? I have to see if I'm not sure if I have my original. I think the original might be around somewhere because I probably would have kept the original, and I know I got. Because the, the electric blue one was the thin version. Yeah, I was think the, that's the one that's more prone to that battery problem, which means I should probably find your guys' PSPs wherever they're hiding and see if the battery has exploded. Yeah. So, light thing. I probably kept the original one, so if I can find that, I can probably play it on there. But the um, but this would have been the second. I know at one point like I bought, I think I had like a silver one, was like what the first one came out. The first one I only ever knew in black. Uh, the first, like, thin version. Oh, the first thin? Yeah, I think there was, like, a platinum colored one. I think I had that, and I think I, like, traded that with somebody. Or, like, I sold it, or, or I sold it to somebody and just swapped it, basically, for the um, for the blue one when it came out. Um, I needed that, of course, because I'm, I'm that guy. You are a little bit psychotic about the blue. Nope. Oh, I mean, uh, okay. Um, you are you are a pile of pixels again. So if you can reset your camera, por favor. But yeah. Hey. So, so I was really bummed to see that. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it was no damage to the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Keegan. Oh, no, I was just saying. Yeah. 
on the video for Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, How was, was released all the yet. details on that. What's that? I have yet to see that. That's pretty cool. They had a lot of they added a whole crafting thing in the game, so that should be fun. Um, fun. A lot of a lot of upgrades in it, so I'm really looking forward to that because that's a nice. I love that game. It's nice and relaxing. I heard their big feature was that you could customize your coffee mug. Really, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, that was something I saw. I don't. know. It could have been a complete thing. It may, may have not been legit. I did not look into it further than coffee cups. Okay, no, it, and kept it might have been scrolling. Yeah, there's all kinds of like little stuff that was in there, so that'd be pretty cool. But the uh, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that one. I mean, I know it's I, I shouldn't like the game. You shouldn't. It, it, this is the one where you and Mark are backwards. Mark should love this game, and you should but, hate yeah. it, and it's flip flopped. Yeah, Mark should be all over that game. It is completely just busy work and just a series of fetch quests and he could probably spreadsheet a bunch of stuff in it, you know, to, to keep track of stuff. Um, but it's like, I don't know. It just, it's got that little Nintendo spin on things and I just like it. Yeah. Which I think is what attracts a lot of people to it. So. Hmm? No one of my friends is really looking forward to it. They even got the special edition uh, switch for it. I'm kind of annoyed that we bought the Switch when we did. <laughs> so you, because you want to get a, what is it? Uh, what is it? That's, what is the subtitle on this one? I forget. Um, like Horizons or something like that. New Horizons. New Horizons. Horizons okay. Yeah, yeah. It's where you're on like a deserted island for a while. And then you grow a bunch of trees and shake them, and then people come shake your trees for you. What is that? <laughs> It sounds like it's code for something dirty, but no, it's literally what happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Keegan, you got anything you've been up to? Uh, yeah, I got some anime I've been watching. Okay. So, uh, did I close? Okay. So, first up, I completed an anime called He Didn't Know Aria. Which the English version, that English title is Arya the uh, Scarlet Bullet, which is about there's this high school for mercenary students, and that they use guns as primarily as weapons. And the main male character uh, is normally not very strong, but if I'm trying to think of the right word, so uh, if he gets, uh, I guess the best word, but it's not really this, but if he gets aroused, he becomes a total badass. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Deadly <laughs> Class was weird. This 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 just goes to a whole new level. Um... Makes sense. <clears throat> so, like, if he kisses a girl or anything along those lines, he his personality changes and he goes into what he calls hysteria mode. And he can shoot like five bullets into five barrels <laughs> in like a second. Because that was basically at the beginning. He was being chased around by robot shooting cars things and he shot five bullets. He shot into the barrels of the guns on the vehicle things <laughs> to blow them up. It's and accurate. dodge bullets in between. <clears throat> oh. It's a fairly accurate concept. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta nod and go, okay, Japan. Okay. <laughs> oh, I finished the season of that. There was a second season, but it turned out the second season was actually just a, uh, what's it called? A, a, my words failing me. Um, Junior high uh, drama? No, it's like it's it's not actually part of the story, but it's it's within the same universe and has it's it's a spin-offs. It was a spin-off series, so I didn't actually watch the second season because I wanted to continue the story that they were doing, not watch a spin-off series as season two. <laughs> okay then. Yeah. Uh, then I recently just started watching um, 
an anime called Darwin's Game. And that one's like Pokemon Go. It, the concept is like Pokemon Go, except it's people trying to kill each other. <laughs> and uh, if you kill people or win the matches, you get points, which can be converted to money. And if you run out of points, you die. So... There's lots of case scenarios where you die, <laughs> where you can die, and I'm liking it so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of people that, like, die and kill each other and stuff, and I'm, I'm liking it so far. <laughs> and some of this stuff is hard. You know how it is trying to explain this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. It never idea. comes right, outright in a way that makes it sound a lot more crazy than it seems when you're watching it. <laughs> Fair, fair. No, there's only five, five, six. Was it six episodes out? Yeah, it was six episodes out. So I'm caught up and waiting for the next one to drop. Um, on the Mong, what's another anime? Uh, watching. I've been keeping up with Boku no Hero. Uh, we're ent- entering the school festival arc. Okay. So, so is it, less is, serious than the last couple seasons. Okay. Is it is it uh is it holding up? Yeah, it's it's still good. It's definitely still very good. Do you know how much do they have do they have much manga lead on it still? Oh or? yeah, the there's there's at least I have a friend who's been reading the manga and he says there's quite a few arcs that they still have yet to get through. So we shouldn't be looking at too much for filler then. No, uh, all of this is legit what's in the manga. Nice. Um manga, I think that's where most of my stuff is. Uh, okay, I guess it's only two series. Okay, so I read the manga um, Kyoku Siru, S-U-I-R-I, Siru, Surai. I can't say it, but it's basically about, um, so there was a girl who uh, was abducted by a yokai and they took her arm what no one uh, her right eye and her left leg i think it was and then made her their uh wisdom god because apparently in, at least in this universe yokai aren't smart so they can't handle minor disputes so they made the her their god to sell disputes and think things through and, and then there's the main male character uh uh oh there's actually a bit of to that, but so I won't spoil much other. So I won't really spoil anything that isn't revealed within the first few chapters. And basically, he ate some uh, yokai and gained some abilities. So they work as a duo to uh, said to uh, discover mysteries with yokai and other spiritual kind of things. It's mostly a mystery, and uh, the main girl character is very good at deduction and coming up with reasonable possibilities of what may have happened. Okay. Yeah. And You're into some weird stuff, my son. <clears throat> what are you watching this stuff on? Like, what's... Oh, um, this last one was a manga. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but the uh, the anime I watched were on uh, Funimation. Okay. I'm just curious about like where everybody like consumes that stuff now. Yeah, it's uh Hulu actually has a fair amount of anime on it. Um and so you could see some of that stuff on there with the with the Hulu thing you got now. Mm-hmm. Um and then Funimation has a has a streaming service that's got a lot of stuff on it. Um, there's some free sites that have like stuff that the license is like expired on or the company no longer exists or whatever. Um, so there are some things you can out there watch legitimately for free. Yeah. Um, 
I got no like I think it was crazy and I never got through the the full rewatch of it. I got another thing on the list. <clears throat> like Neon Genesis Evangelion went to Netflix. Right. But I was having a hard time getting past the the new dub. <laughs> See, I never watch it in sub then. <laughs> Yeah, I only ever watched subs, so we just watched the sub, which there's some difference in the subtitles, but it's been so yeah. long since I watched it, most of it I missed. The, um, I mean, I, I've i watched it like both ways and everything like that, but I actually like the English dub of it, you know, okay. uh, the last run I had on DVDs at least. Um, so, like, you know, I was kind of like used to that, you know? Right. <laughs> and I was just like, huh. Um, okay, then the other manga I read was Kimi wa Kawaii Ononoko. You have to say Kawaii! <laughs> Which, that one's just kind of a slice of life romance, uh, a high school romance with a girl who um, is very small and frail and a normal, in a just kind of generic cool guy. <laughs> so that okay. part got uh, to, in my opinion, a creepy level of jealous. <laughs> oh like there was like one line where he said he doesn't want any other guy seeing her smile or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I read that. I was like, um, okay. Okay. It's a little, little bit much there. Yeah. Watch so I don't think they're going to go that route where everything turns bad, but it's just kind of like, okay, I I guess. Weird, but all right. Yeah. Um. Okay. Then there's the anime I've watched at uh, the anime club I go to. Um. This last time I was I watched uh. The next, the next episode, next episode of Land of Lustrious that uh, we're watching in there. So that's basically about gem people. Gem people. Yeah, uh, that's like, the best. Like, way like Steven Universe gem people, or uh, sort of. They, they, there's some that fight. There's like they're made out of gems. Like, they can break apart, then be put back together, and they're agender and that can't die. They just break it apart and have to be put back, back together. Though, if they're broken, and if you can't find all their parts, then they can't be put back together, and... <laughs> okay, then. <clears throat> so, as far as I'm aware, that has not happened yet. But it's almost happened. <laughs> <laughs> Weird gem golem people thing. And they're Scott. fighting this. I don't even know what to describe it as, these enemies as, but they're basically cloud uh, angel weird things that throw lances. Or kind of like two pronged tridents? Two pronged tridents. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. It's just that, called a. It's just called a barbecue fork. <laughs> barbecue fork. <laughs> yeah, fancy barbecue fork. I guess it would just be a spear. Anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's definitely interesting, and I'm definitely looking forward to how that moves forward. Because definitely interesting, and also. Uh, Mononoke, which deals with yokai, and uh, there's this guy who uh, uh, tries and slays yokai, basically. Though it's not as it's not action based. It's so it, the art style is like traditional Japanese slash Chinese art style, and he, the guy has a sword that as soon as it's drawn, it kill will kill the yokai, but it has conditions to be drawn. I think the conditions are the yokai has to be there 
uh, there has to be regret and one other that I can't remember. But there's three conditions that have to be met before he can draw the sword. Hmm. And once he draws the sword, the yokai dies. And and since this has been mentioned several times, if there's anyone watching who does not know what a yokai is, a yokai is kind of a a spirit or a ghost. Sometimes they're monstrous. Sometimes they're mischievous. Sometimes they're uh, benevolent or not necessarily benevolent, but uh, neutral. Yeah. Um, they're presented in many different ways across uh, the spectrum. Um, you know, the, the game Yokai watch basically treated them like Pokemon. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's there, but they're spirity kind of ghosty type things that usually have a tie to an area or a region for some particular thing. Mm -hmm. I think the enemies in, I think the enemies in, uh, Neo were called yokai too. So it gets kind of confusing exactly what they are. I think it's used kind of for a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, then the last thing I watched uh, was 80808, which is cyberpunk uh, criminal cops. So, like, these uh, criminals were hired to be cops to try and reduce their sentence of, like, ridiculously high levels. It was in OAV, OA, uh, can't say the word, OAV or whatever it was. Yeah, OVA, yeah. And it had three episodes. We just finished the last episode, the oh, last Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. It was Tuesday. And so, yeah. Overall, it was very enjoyable, and I felt like it, the ending didn't really end it, but it was the ending, so eh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, leave. Sometimes OVAs will roll over into a, a regular series, so mm -hmm. you know. But it does not appear like that happened with it. Yeah. Um, that happened with Blood, and Blood Plus. This isn't a show or anything, but there was a play I had to go to for my intro to theater class. Yeah. Uh, 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 journey, uh, long day's journey into night, by. Eugene O'Neill. That sounds yes, I remember. Uh, but basically, it's about a very dysfunctional family. Uh, there's, it's actually autobiographical. Uh, so it's actually the something that happened in the uh, the director's life. Is that or the person who wrote the, the, the writer? Play, yeah, the, yeah, the writer's screen, life. Not screenwrite, playwright, playwright. There, yeah, go. playwright life and basically the there was an uh, the father was an alcoholic uh basically an alcoholic and uh was an actor the mom used to want to be a nun but then got uh got married to the dad and uh ended up having uh ended up getting uh, addicted to medicine <laughs> Um, his, there were, the older brother was an alcoholic, <laughs> and then it was him, which also a little bit heavy on the drinking, though not as much as his older brother and father. Hmm. And, so, was it good? Oh yeah, overall, I I enjoyed it. It was it was very dark and. As you can tell from just kind of my brief summary of each of the characters, it was not a happy play. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound like it. I'm assuming it was not. It was a straight play. It wasn't a musical. It doesn't sound like it was, it was a straight play. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot the the uh, the main character. No, the protagonist, which he he used uh, the character's name was Edmund instead of uh, his name because so. I'm not sure if this part is part of it, but he uh, in the play uh, Edmund had a little brother that would died earlier on that was that had the name of the playwright. So I he flipped around the names there, so he was really uh, 
Edmund in the play, and Edmund had uh, consumption, which, uh, what does, what is that, actually? Um, uh, one sec. It's one of those words you hear from, like, westerns, and you just go, oh, okay. You don't, uh, no, nobody really knows what that is. I'm waiting for Dave to drop some knowledge, but I think he's playing his Switch or something. Consumption, uh... No, no, that's not the right I'm word. Not sure we're gonna have a lot of knowledge here. In this uh, it was uh, uh, to tuberculosis. That oh, okay, it's tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Okay, I, I, that was the first thing that actually came to my mind when you said that. I'm like, but I, I was, I doubted yeah, my knowledge. Which it's so he had that, so he was sick, and <laughs> so it was, and it all took place over one night, and lots of stuff happened. Hence, long day into night. <laughs> right. That's a pretty accurate title. Well, that's good. It was, the total time of it was like three hours and fifteen minutes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good hefty play. Was yeah. it three acts? Uh, I think it was more acts, oh. but there was only one intermission. Yeah, that's typical. But oh, yeah. Overall, it was really good and really well done, and yeah, nice. Anything else I've done? I don't know. Uh, other than uh, studying for tests, taking tests, and doing homework. Yeah, I heard you had a bit of a test gauntlet there. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and a couple papers due on Friday. <laughs> Ugh. Always fun when they all decide to coalesce all that stuff on the same week. Yep. <laughs> it's almost like they plan it that way. No, but they don't do that much coordination. It's just... No, it's just, just the, the way the timing flow of, of classes the semester, like, tend to work. It's like every three weeks or something like that. Yeah, where... just, since they're all working on the same semester schedule, they just they kind of naturally break up in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But all right, well that's good. Um, I my my list is incredibly short, and I'm going to try to not drag it out because it's boring. Uh, uh, on the game front, all good I've... night, everybody. What? <laughs> 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 on the game front, all I've really played is Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. I've muddled around a bit with a couple other things that I picked up on recent sales or came through the through the Plus subscription or something, but I haven't played enough to really go get any to get anywhere on any of it except for Super Star Wars. I guess I do have to claim that one. I did pick that one up on sale. It was like a buck fifty or something, just to prove to myself that that game does suck as much as I remember. <laughs> oh yeah, I did play that. Yeah, you I did. They were like a big deal when they came out. They, they were. They were a big deal. Um, people they, were like, like I remember people like you know bragging like you know oh you can't play this because you don't have a Super Nintendo and I'm like I maybe I'm missing something but when I played the games like they they weren't good. <laughs> no, they're they're not. They're not. Well, I think they get better. I think Empire, oddly enough, is like the high point of the series. Um, if I remember correctly, um, you know, it suffers from that whole, if you do a license thing, you have to do something related to the, the media that it came from. So it's like where now we do license things and we get original stories like Jedi fallen order or, yeah. you know, other original content that's in the same world and has similar themes, but it's original content. It's not trying to, uh, live off of that, that original media. So you have Luke running around the desert with a blaster shooting lizards, insect kangaroos and scorpions that shoot acid out of their tail and then slaughtering an entire sand or uh, sand crawler worth of Jawas. That um, come back to life every that time. Come back to life whenever they go off the screen and have thermal detonators that they throw at your head for some reason. <laughs> and those thermal detonators hurt. <laughs> they do. You would expect of a thermal detonator to your face, but <laughs> they should also take out half of the sand crawler at the same time. But you know, <laughs> Dave, did you did you have some some commentary there? It's just like the way they made you know games with that kind of stuff. It was just like damn near impossible. But and... I mean that that they did that with ET, and that almost killed the home video game market. Yeah, that wasn't. I mean, the whole thing behind that is just like, this is ridiculous. Like, they literally gave him 
no time. Yeah, no time, no money, and you have this ridiculous expectation. Go. <laughs> but yeah, we have, whenever I'm sitting there playing that, oh, I remember the part of the movie where Luke murders dozens of Jawas <laughs> with a rocket launcher. I still remember almost passing on that Riddick game on the original Xbox. Oh, the Athena Bay or the Bay... The one where Butcher's he's in Bay. prison? Yeah, the Butcher's Bay Butcher's one. Bay, yeah. And, uh, and, and I just kept telling people, I was like, it's a movie game. Movie games are not good. They will never be good. And, it was a um, prequel, right? And it actually was good. I never played it, but... It was, it was fantastic. Yeah, and it was a, it was a like, prequel. It, it was actually it ties into the rest of the movie <laughs> series. They had They brought back the original writer of the story so it was like written by the original writer all the original like not all the but the original actors there was like more than one actor mm -hmm. um that was involved in it you know bringing back their characters uh, that were in the movie and like it was just like it, it was just damn good <laughs> i'm really surprised that as and, well as that was received and with Vin Diesel being Vin Diesel, that there haven't been more games in that series since the movie series seems to be pretty much dead. They did. They did another one. Well, there was, yeah, but I mean, more. I mean, the last one was, what, 2005? Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think they did, like, one more. <laughs> yeah, they did, yeah, they did one more, yeah. And I, that one was and not like, as uh, well received, if I remember correctly, but... Not as, no. But... But the... Uh, yeah, no. I mean, it was they they showed how it could be done that you can make a good you know movie based game. You are a and, pile of pixels again, good sir. If you wouldn't mind uh, tickling anyway. the camera, there we go. But the uh, yeah, so I mean, it was it was great to you know he at least we have Vin Diesel to thank for showing people the way. <laughs> so that was good. But yeah, like, who, so... would have, who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have to thank for that. He he finds his way into everything somehow. Uh, someday I'm going to watch all those Fast and Furious movies, but not today. Not, not sure it would be really impressive if you that. watched all of them today. <laughs> it would be. That, that would be a hell of a catch-up. There's not enough hours left in today to actually Yeah, I know. Down. How about in the next I don't even think hours. there's enough hours in a day, is there? There's nine of them. They're about two, 18 hours. Okay, yeah, I should be able to do it, but barely. <laughs> I thought the, the funny thing <laughs> is... is be quiet. The funny thing is, is the first movie of that series is radically different than what this has become. I love the first movie. I think it is a really good movie. It, it, it's basically Point Break, but with cars. And... I don't I, remember the first movie. Well, all you have to remember is basically Point Break with cars. <laughs> um, and it, I mean, it was really well done. Um, I fell off at Tokyo Drift. I could not, I could not get into Tokyo Drift, and I fell off of the series. And then when it came back after that, it turned into this like action thriller. They like took some of the elements from Triple X and brought it into that, and they're all of a sudden they're like this elite, like special agent team, and you know threw all reality out the window completely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's insane what that series has done to keep going and, and keep out there. And oh yeah, by the way, there's a horrible, horrible, horrible game tie -in <laughs> that's coming out soon. <laughs> that nice. They had Vin and uh, Michelle Rodriguez on stage at the game awards to, to hawk for. <laughs> that's a shame. Yeah. It, it it looks bad. It looks it looks really bad. Um, it might be good, but it does not, in any way, shape, or form, look good. Maybe they're doing the uh, uh, Sonic effect. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They're showing you the bad game, and then they'll turn around. No, here's really the game we might we were going to give you. I, I will um, say that whole turnaround thing with that Sonic movie. Brilliant bit of marketing. Um. Yeah, and you know something good on the studio for making that work. You know, for actually listening to that feedback and saying, like, you know something, let's fix this. Because you know that had to cost them a ton. Yeah, I, I'm almost, I'm, you know, you know, I have my little hype, my little conspiracy theories, but 
I'm not sure that that wasn't constructed. It's, it's possible. Because <laughs> the amount of time that they had to completely redesign the character and then re-render that entire movie, yeah, they delayed it, but they didn't delay it that long. Yeah, but if you think, I mean, what it, I mean with today's with today's tech, I mean, this is not like we're not talking about this movie was like breaking new ground. No, in this kind of stuff, you well, know. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, down to the fact that the characters are different height with this model, which means eye lines are off and everything. So, I don't know. <laughs> it, it it feels a little constructed to me, or like maybe not constructed, but they had more than one version of this movie and they're mm-hmm. like oh yeah we want to go with this one oh no they don't like that one oh let's go with this one then. let's just lean into this bad buzz and, and make it look like we're uh, yeah i don't know I, I mean i like a good conspiracy theory but i just that's a risk oh yeah it's a, it's a huge risk it is it because is. if people get too stuck in that it's just going to be bad they're not going to give it a chance yeah i mean this isn't like gritty here yeah which is probably by far the most amazing marketing thing ever done in this century. Do you want to synopsis it for those unaware? Oh, so they wanted to do a new mascot for the Philadelphia Flyers hockey team. So they brought out, you know, this big thing that they were going to do an unveiling of this character. And they wanted to make it seem, they wanted to make it a little bit like the Philly fanatic. So it was like, I guess, design with the people who designed a Philly Fanatic or whatever, and just kind of capture on that sort of, you know, ride that train because Philly Fanatic is like one of the most popular mascots in in sports. So they unveiled this gritty, and it turns around, and it's got these like creepy googly eyes, this like horrible monster's face, and I mean, this thing is just beyond creepy it looked like it was just coked up like i mean the whole nine yards and it was like just people just like railed against it for like not even a full 24 hours and somewhere around like you know halfway through the day or something like that people just all of a sudden rally behind it (laughs) (laughs) and it became this like thing like no no you can't hate it because we we love it, and I don't know if it's just like unique to a Philly thing, because we tend to do that. <laughs> you know? But people just like rally behind it and just like completely just welcomed it, and it's just been hilarious ever like ever since. And it was just like amazing that they were able to pull this off, and you just had to imagine that the. Like all the the marketing execs were, you know, probably in the room when, you know, the initial the initial reactions were coming out. <laughs> they were probably just like, hold, hold, <laughs> stay on target, <laughs> stay on target. It's so, like, you know, yeah, we we got this. Don't worry. This is, you know, you just gotta you just gotta hang, hang tight. And, and and I don't know if you guys can see or not, but I I, I did a quick Google yeah. search and threw it up there. So this is the thing that and that that, that, that he's talking about. <laughs> Uh, this one has a happier face, so they must have like a, a different uh, faces that they can swap out on them because this is this is the super creep face from the reveal, and this is the like happier face. So, uh, I gotta find my. There we go. Um, so yeah. Anyway, okay, back to me because this was about me, not about. Oh yeah. Y'all. All right. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Dream Drop Distance, I've actually finally clicked something in my brain, although every time I think I've got the whole Materia Pokemon battle partner thing figured out, I learn something new about it and go, son of a... Because I don't know how. I, looking at some of the stuff, like how you would ever grind that out, because I am in to the second to last level of the game, and I've barely touched the surface. And I've been grinding these Pokemon things out to get the skills, like, non-stop. And I still don't even... I don't have all of them crafted. I don't have all, all of them discovered. I don't have the recipes for all of them. And I far from have all the skills. And now I just learned, this last time I was playing, that some of the skills you have to have the Pokemon equipped in your party to get, while other ones 
are permanent. So then you got to sit in here and figure out, okay, which skills do I have to have the Pokemon in my party to have versus which ones are permanent? And then, okay, now if I want to go into this thing, which ones do I want to have in my party, which aren't necessarily the ones that have the best attacks and stuff, but are the ones that boost my stats the most because really I'm the only character that matters. What and Pokemon game are you talking about? It's Kingdom, not, Drop it's Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. A little dream Pokemon. Yeah, you have that. That aid you instead of Donald and Goofy because they can't enter the dream world. Yeah, it makes you appreciate the Pokemon games, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does. This 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 was an interesting concept. Um, it is Kingdom Hearts 3D because it was on the 3DS originally. I'm playing it on the PS4, so I probably am losing something not having that 3DS uh, format for it. Um, yeah, I mentioned that changes things. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I finally got to the point where I was comfortable with it and I was figuring it out. And, and now I got to the second last level and I just got my butt handed to me. I was just getting thrashed. And part was of that was, why the leaf bracer wasn't working or is the frames for that just no, so picky? The, it's very picky. That leaf bracer has very picky frames. Um, leaf bracer is one of the ones that's permanent. So once you have it, you have it. You don't have to keep that Pokemon okay. equipped. Um but I think what happened, part of it was, is I equipped a new Pokemon when I went into the new world, and they're all level one, and they're not giving me the stat boosts, or not level one, but they're all, none of their skill tree has been unlocked, which isn't their skill tree, it's your skill tree. So the skills that they learn by getting experience that you have to buy off the grid are actually for you, not for them. It's materia, except you don't keep the skills. Um... But you didn't with Materia either. You did with Espers. So it's somewhere in between. I guess it's closest to Materia, actually. Except they're also battle partners that you can bond with and do super attacks. <laughs> There's one where you summon... Um, it's basically Meteor from Final Fantasy VII, except they call it Comet. And uh, your character and the two Pokemon are just kind of lounging around on this giant Comet that comes and crashes into the planet. And then obliterates everything and you're just standing there smiling in your in your idle animation with your hands over your head it's just it's the weirdest thing uh um, I, I need you to take <clears throat> your camera again good sir sounds awful uh it, it's not the highlight of the series I'll, I'll tell you that but um i'm almost done so i just need to get done with that and then i can do birth by sleep 0.02 and then i can finally get to kingdom hearts 3 maybe before final seven final fantasy 7 remake comes out maybe um, maybe i still remember just being so disappointed in that first game yeah yeah i i, I get it uh, i i still think there is more good to the series than there is bad but yeah there, there's definitely some jank in there that they never fully get rid of regardless of the platform um Oddly enough, the PSP version is still the best game. Huh. And I don't know if that's just because they had to try to live within the limitations of the PSP system. Or, yeah, the worlds were more limited, the worlds were smaller, but the gameplay and the game flow was just great. And it was an original story because it was uh, characters you hadn't dealt with before. And... Terra Inventus. Yeah, so... Anyway... Um, so that's really it for the gaming, um, on, uh, on the uh, reading, I'm still reading, uh, Leviathan Wakes, which is the first book of the Expanse series. Uh, so that's going very slowly, but it's very good. Um, it is incredibly well written. I, I see why it was, uh, so, so well loved and picked up for the, for the TV series. I was trying to say, was it, is this TV series made a book series or is it no, the it's book a, the, series, the, series the, made a TV? Yeah, the book series came first and then the TV series was based on it. Um, I think there's a total of like seven books and they're on like book four in the TV it's series. Another now. show I got to catch up on and it's been good. And excellent show. Yeah, I caught up on that a bit ago. So that is uh, season four is not the best it's been, but it's still better than most things. Um. So let's see, uh, as far as TV goes, uh, still working on Magician Season 4, and I finished uh, Lock and Key uh, Season 1. Um, Keegan, have you watched that at all? You didn't mention it. No, I have not. Okay, and I'm sure you haven't watched it, Dave. Which? Uh, Lock and Key. 
No, not yet. Got another one that's on the list. Um, <laughs> I heard it's good. It's it's not bad. It's good. Uh, it's very enjoyable. It, it's 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 good, except how do I say this without getting to characters throughout will do incredibly stupid things, and for the most part, it's like right at the edge of being bothersome until you get to the end. I can only suspend my disbelief so much. <laughs> there are a couple of choices that are made at the end of this season where you're just like, come on. No, there, there's no, no, there's no way that any reasonable, even fictional person who needs to move a plot forward would make this choice. Uh, um, what age are the kids? Aren't they younger? Well, well, the, the, they're like a junior, freshman, and like fifth grader-ish. They're never really locked in at exactly what age they are or where they're they are. making illogical school. choices shouldn't be too yeah, surprising. Yeah, but there are also adults at that point that are making incredibly stupid choices. I mean, I get it when the fourth, fifth grader, whatever, does things like, huh, this has a skull on it, and this has a skull on it. If I put them together, obviously nothing bad is going to happen. Um, but you know, you know, I, I, I get that. And, and it's still really interesting and they definitely leave it off on a cliffhanger with, with more to do. And, you know, hope, it sounds like it's done really well for them. So it'll probably get a second season and I'll probably watch it. But there were definitely points where I'm just going like, mm. it does have some couple of really good turns. Uh, there are a couple of really good reveals in there. Um, but, uh, by the uh, fortunately, the end is where the stuff where you just know there are a lot easier ways to do that that would have made sense than to do what you did. I really want to read the graphic novel now and find out if they played that out the same way in the graphic novel or if they did it differently in the series because this is based on a graphic novel. Um, mm -hmm. so I may have to go get a library card and see if I can check that out um because I don't think I want to buy it but uh find it somehow um but yeah so uh it, it's it's good um it's it's kind of like it's kind of feels like it's written for the kids that uh read or had read to them a series of unfortunate events when they were younger and this is like the next step up uh kind of from that uh age-wise so that that's kind of the feel it has, um, but mixed in with a bit of Spiderwick Chronicles and Fable Haven, uh, which are two uh, book series. Um, I know, I don't know. Did you read either of those? Any of those, Keegan? I know Mitchell did. But... Um, I think I've read one of the Spiderwick Chronicle books. Okay. But uh, yeah. So let's see. That that's pretty much it. Uh, I haven't watched any anime. I uh, have recently. I haven't. Uh, can't think of any other shows. We haven't even really been watching shows. We're we're, we're like three weeks behind on Doctor Who. Um, I think we're a couple weeks behind on. Or did we finish out the season? I don't remember if if uh, Prodigal Son if the season ended and we watched that out, or if we are a couple weeks behind on that too. But it's just been busy with a lot of stuff so we haven't had a lot of time for the group to watch stuff um but yeah so i think that that's pretty much it uh i promised that that mine would be short and it still took like 20 minutes to get through that so oh we did have a couple of nice little divergences there so yep. um so uh i don't have like a topic ready we kind of rambled there for a about an hour and 20 minutes <laughs> so uh if we don't have a topic we could just jump straight into the news but is there is there anything that anyone wanted to to bring up to to talk about specifically why are they bringing back tiger handhelds why are they bringing back tiger handhelds because uh nostalgia and retro are currently the largest fad and money maker on the market for good stuff no it doesn't really matter does case in point NES Classic sells great SNES Classic sells great 
Genesis Mini sells great, well received. PlayStation Mini gets trashed because it was a terrible product. And it costs too much. I mean, honestly, if it had cost half of what it cost, I don't think it would have gotten trashed as hard. No, but that's a thing. It was still getting trashed when they were like liquidating at thirty bucks. Fair, it's true. Um, like it's just because the the game selection's bad. The versions of the games are bad. Like I don't even understand that whole thing. Yeah, that, that there had to be some weird licensing thing or something going on there, but I don't know. Or people are just didn't care. That, that is always a possibility. Uh, it had to be. But there are people. But see, that's the thing. If you have nostalgia for a bad thing that was bad to start with, that's fine. And that's what this is. This isn't nostalgia for a thing that was probably not as good as you remember, but still you put out a product that's less good than that. That's why the PS Classic failed. Tiger handheld games were crap to start with, and everybody knew they were crap. But sometimes that was the only option they had because that was all their parents would buy them. So they played those things to death. And so that's where people will still buy them because they remember them as crap. And so it's okay to be nostalgic about crap as long as you acknowledge it was crap. I just said crap more in the last <laughs> five minutes than I've said in the last five years of my life. You did. <laughs> Disagree? <clears throat> no, totally agree. Um, that I just kind of I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> and this from the guy who will buy anything here. that's a certain shade of certain shade of blue. So, but it has to be something good. <laughs> I don't think so. I think if it's a certain shade of blue, you'll buy it regardless. Not true. <laughs> Translucent electric blue. Has there ever been a translucent electric blue thing that you've seen that you have not bought? Yeah, but let's look at like what they were. <laughs> right? I have my <laughs> This is this is going down a path. <laughs> It this, is. This is rated E, so, so don't don't go down certain paths. No, uh, no, no, no. It's not. It's not that. It's just like a. I'm really gonna feel like a loser. Um. So remember the Game Boy Color. Yeah. Did they ever make a translucent blue version of that? I have no idea. Uh, they made a gajillion and twenty seven versions of that, so they must have. They did. For a Japanese airline exclusive. Oh, that's right. That's that one. Yeah. And I have it. <laughs> <laughs> and we won't talk about how much that sets you back. It didn't, surprisingly. <laughs> Apparently, the, you know, the Japanese airline one, not exactly sought after, like the Astro Boy one, which was the other version um, that was relatively a, a clear plastic blue one. Um, but apparently Astro Boy is a little bit more popular than some airline. So, <laughs> who knew? I can name zero Japanese yeah. airlines unless one of them's named Airline Japan. So <laughs> Exactly. So so I, I was just like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. You know, the thing was brand new. It was perfect. Um, so, yeah, I have it and I'm happy with that. Um, but you know, there was like a, a 2DS came out in clear blue. I had to get that. Um, but again, quality system, um, you know, my clear blue PS4 controller, you know, again, dual shot controllers are good quality product. Very selective. I still maintain if a PS Classic got launched today that was translucent blue, you would buy it. Ah. <laughs> yes, debate it, meaning yes. I don't think so. He doesn't think so. That's not a no, so we'll we'll go with it. Well, if it was uh, we'll... released right when it was out, came out. A, <clears throat> like, with the game selection... Like, I actually was selective about that stuff. Like, 
I wasn't just like, you know, the Genesis Mini. I was not going to jump on that right away. Um, until I found out they actually were taking, you know, care in making it. Um, you know, the game selection on that thing is phenomenal. Like, it really is like some of the best games on the Genesis, like the true best games on it. Um, there's like a really good selection on there. And, and, and they got Yu Suzuki to do new music for the menu, for the menu screens. Hmm. Which is notable because that guy knew how to make some music on that thing. Yeah. Okay. So they actually made a chip tune sound. So, so it sounds like something that would have come out of a, a uh, out of a Genesis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally you know, it's totally Genesis music for the for the menu screens. You know, done by Yu Suzuki, who is most notable for um, doing the, um, you know, probably most known for the. I mean, the, he did all kinds of great soundtracks, but um, my personal favorite is the like Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage Two. Yeah. Um, he was behind the music for those, um, which were just phenomenal soundtracks for games. Was he Panzer Dragoon? Uh, let me look up again. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not confident in that at all. But it's tickling a brain cell. I don't know if Keegan's sitting really still or his camera's frozen now. It's frozen. Okay. We're not having very good luck with the cameras tonight, folks. I apologize. That. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to blame Discord. Fair enough. Know, I don't know what else to do. You know something? Did I get the wrong... Wait. I think I messed up names here. Oh, that's entirely possible. I, I I will I will I will bow to the fact that my Japanese composer knowledge is not what it should be. You said sounded that some said some, you said something that sounded reasonably accurate. Oh, so God. I went with it. I'm thinking of okay. I'm thinking of Yuzo. Um, wait. Let me make sure I get the yeah Yuzo Koshiro is the guy that did the the soundtracks for uh, Streets of Rage. Okay, that's who I was thinking of for that. Okay, and This is great radio. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, okay. Do, do. Hey, we don't need a copyright. Um, <laughs> that would get copyright. Yeah, if it's close enough, sometimes you never know. Okay, so, all right. Yeah, all right. So the menu music was Yuzo Koshiro. Okay. Okay. What is the guy who did Street to Rage music? Okay. Right. Okay. I just I mixed up the names. I was the, the developer name Yuzuzuki. Right. So Okay. Dope. Cool. Yeah, he did the um he did all the sound he did the soundtracks for uh, Revenge of Shinobi, Streets of Rage Two, Beyond Oasis, all those games. For useless trivia you did not need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it'll say it'll, it'll get somebody to win a jeopardy right. or something at some point. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire still on? I don't know. I don't pay attention to such things. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's the weebs. It's the weebs. Not chewing on the power cords like a man. No. Um, no, she's pretty good with that. <laughs> Okay, so um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, yeah, I guess one item we didn't have in the news is Tiger, or there is a release that Tiger handheld clones will be coming out, or not clones, uh, retro re-releases. Uh, what is it, Transformers? Was the one I remember. <laughs> I don't remember. 
<laughs> Somebody want to look that up? Because I don't think I can do that without shuffling screens. Ugh. Let's not talk about it anymore. It's just upsetting me. Okay. Well, mm. and then I forgot. Okay. I, don't, I don't want to harsh my buzz. So there's, but there's like four <laughs> coming out. So, uh, all right. So, uh, we try to get the news highlights out on Twitter, uh, gamers, uh, twitter.com slash gamers ledge. We'll admit we've been a little weak on this lately. So, uh, we'll, we'll try and hope and, uh, shore this up a bit here in the future. Uh, so I may try to, to Google up some, some news after this because I don't remember everything. Um, there was a, a survey that went out to a bunch of folks. I did not get one uh, for the PlayStation asking uh, about different remote play options um, and uh, other things with the social stuff going on. But the, the big one seemed to be that Sony was looking at possibly putting remote play out specifically on the Switch and uh, possibly on, on other consoles, uh, namely Xbox. Uh, which would allow you to be able to remote play into your PlayStation 4 system from another system. We don't know if this is something being looked at for the PS5, if this is something that they're even seriously considering, but since they put a survey out to existing users, one would think it's something that they're at least pondering, but they've done this before and then never followed up. So, who knows? Would having remote play for your PS4 on your switch dave help you put in more ps4 time because you would remove that excuse of it's not on the go <laughs> um you know something that would be very that would make things kind of interesting to be honest all right um i'm wondering how that would work because of the resolution and stuff like it would definitely have to be rest yeah i mean they're not going to be yeah, I mean, it's not going to be full quality, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. so, oh. And we've seen on the Switch, there are times that it will, uh, like, the good, uh, what's it called, the uh, jump uh, words not working, but, like, when it's uh, Breath of the Wild and you enter oh, an area frame, that yeah, has frame lost rate drops. Stuff. Yeah, but frame the, rate thing, drops. the thing is there, though, the, the Switch wouldn't be processing any of the video. It's just a, a, a remote session video display it's still all rendering and processing on the playstation now i know we've had terrible luck with remote play uh in our house uh just not connecting not working well just generally not had a lot of luck with it mark swears by it he's like i can do it on an airplane i can do it on a 1k connection out of uganda and it all works perfect and awesome I don't know why for him it does. Uh, I've never had great luck with it. Um, but uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see if they go that route. You know, there's lots of talk about a lot of cross uh, stuff these days. And I, I don't know if we'll ever see any of it, but who knows? I, you know, the, the, the kind of current logic is that eventually there will be no more consoles and you'll just buy a PlayStation service or a, xbox service and you'll you'll get your content via some sort of service rather than uh through a through they'll all become stadia well you know yeah, there's well there's, there's i'm finally gonna have the internet connection to actually handle something like that so <laughs> yeah that, that is the problem is i don't unless they are willing to just completely cut out certain segments of the population i can't see it going that way even in the foreseeable future, oh, but what do I know? Uh, Stadia and NVIDIA seem to have failed epically with their uh, outings. I was going to say, as I, I have not heard a single blurb about Stadia. Yeah, it's it's pretty dead, and I think they've lost some games, and yeah, it, it, it's, it does not seem to be going well. Now the question is, will they stick with it and just let it kind of coast or do some sort of relaunch with it? Or will they just drop it like a baby giraffe Kirk plump and uh, anyone that got that reference gets two points. Um, I'll take care of that one. If I lose two points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get the points. You all don't. Uh, season two of Mandalorian will be hitting in October. So that's coming Ooh, a bit quicker than yay. we thought it, thought it would be possibly. So that's good. 
Uh, PlayStation 5 website is up. You can log into it uh, and and sign up for email notifications. Uh, it's been kind of horrible listening to podcasts and different sites and stuff, especially that are PlayStation dedicated because everybody's like, well, we still don't have any PS5 news this week, so let's scrape together something else because we really thought we would have PS5 news, so we didn't prepare anything. Um, so everybody kind of is holding on to this PS5 thing. Uh, there's, I don't know if we have anything in here. If we don't, we'll have to talk more about the PS5 and announcements and some other things that they are doing and what I think might be going on. Uh, but we'll, we'll hold on and see. I don't remember if any of that's in the stream, in the news feed here or not. Um, well, here's, uh, NVIDIA. Uh, I wrote this, so I will cop to this i did not read the article well enough before posting this and yeah this this is this is no more the netflix of games uh this is the nvidia shield uh or nvidia geforce now streaming service and it is basically the exact same thing as stadia um so this is a very terribly misleading thing and i never redacted it and i should have so i apologize anyone who read this and then laughed and said these guys know nothing because i tried to do this while busy and it 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 got me it got me good. Um, we will have another story on that in a bit here. Uh, this is a thing. And then, so you can see, we went from February 4th to February 18th. So not exactly news heavy and not exactly super great on sharing it on the Twitter feed. So apologize for that. Um, now, this is something we might have to debate a little bit here because... I think this is kind of a cool initiative that PlayStation is trying, and both Mark and Dave basically said this is the worst thing that ever occurred in the history of mankind. Uh, You know, Nazi Germany was a better thing than this. Um, So PlayStation is doing a thing they're calling Player Celebration. It starts on February 18th, is that? So that would have been this week. Um, so, uh, you, you sign up and basically all the games that you play for at least an hour of, and all the trophies that you unlock go toward meeting a goal. So it's kind of set up like a a Patreon thing, uh, or a Kickstarter, uh, of the type of some sort. So there's three goal tiers, the second, so everyone that contributes to tier one will get the prizes for tier one when it's accomplished, which unlocks tier two and up to tier three. Everyone that participates is put in a drawing for uh, everyone that's registered, actually. I I don't think the stipulation is that they uh, contribute necessarily, but everyone that's registered is put into a drawing for some physical swag. There's a a PS4 Pro kit, um, some uh, download codes for games, and a a $100 uh, PSN credit uh, card not a credit card but a card that you uh you know you pipe the code into the psn store and you have a hundred dollars gift card yeah gift card yeah it's those cards you can buy online or at a store that you type the code in and then you have that much money in your your wallet um and then ultimately the ultimate prize the the king kamehameha of of this is a actual physical platinum trophy with your uh, PSN user ID inscribed on it. And that is not for contribution. That is not like for the person who contributed the most or did the most. It is a, it is a random drawing. So anyone that that's in this has, has a chance to get that. Um, it's long been said and wondered, you know, why can't we do something more with trophies rather than have this just kind of weird meta game that we're, you know, some people chase them. Some people hate them, Dave, uh, you know, some people just, to tolerate their existence, but why aren't they more useful? Um, there was for a while, if you were a member of the Sony Rewards program, if you got so many trophies of a certain level, you got uh, reward points into your Sony Rewards account. They stopped that program uh, with the thought that they might bring it back at some point. And, and you know, there's always just been a way, how can you make uh, trophies or achievements or, you know, either on either side more useful uh, Microsoft does have a program with achievements where you can turn them in for Microsoft store Xbox store credit I think you can turn them in for something I, I don't own an Xbox so apologize my knowledge there is a little bit weak 
Um, and so I think this is an interesting thing. I, I think the goals are a bit excessive. Um, there's like a lot of hours and a lot of trophies at each level that they want to accomplish. And this is only going until mid-March. So it's mid-February to mid-March is the period for this. Um, and honestly, I haven't looked at it since I signed up for it when it was announced. So I have no idea how things are, are going along. We could look it up if we want. But um, I think it's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, hopefully, if, if it does not succeed the way they want it to, they'll take the time to uh, re re yeah, learn from it and, and do a version two. Lots of times we see with Sony, they'll do these things like, like the voting for what the PS plus game of the month is going to be where they had a couple of times or one or twice where you got to vote on what game was going to be come with the plus subscription. And then it didn't quite perfectly work out the way they thought. And instead of refining it or working on it, they just dropped it. Um, Hopefully that if this doesn't go quite the way they want it to, they won't drop it. They'll refine it and they'll keep trying uh, things like this. Uh, but we'll have to see. I, I have no idea uh, how well this is going to work, but it's 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 something interesting. It's something to engage the community with. And I also think it might be tied to the announcement of the PS5. I don't think they're going to announce the details on the PS5 until this player celebration is done. So I don't think we're going to see any PS5 details in February yet still. I don't think we're going to get anything until <clears throat> March. I, March. Here's, the, here's the thing. Do, are, we, are, we, are we expecting anything big surprises? Like it's just going to be... The system's going to be beefy. It's going to have games. Like, I mean, I, am I just jaded at this point? It's not. It's not jaded. We that, just a, want a, the specs. And... That's a whole another conversation that we probably could get into. Um, yeah, I, I think there's information like, okay, what is? I mean, some. Just what does it look like, right? Just just show us a unit. What does it look like? What's the timeline so people can start? If you haven't already started saving, which I don't know why in the world you wouldn't have, but you know. If, if, if you have followed this stuff at all, you should have started saving by now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have hopefully enough for a system, an extra controller, and at least one or two games saved up already. Um, hopefully. And then obviously that's the big thing is price. But that brings into another thing that, you know, recently uh, there have been a couple of different events, including uh, 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 reporting on a shareholders meeting where they're basically saying we we don't want to put a price point out on this yet and honestly we don't know when we want to but we really want microsoft to do theirs first essentially is what it <laughs> breaks down to um we want to know how much money we're going to be losing on this thing right right now the report is <clears throat> that the the per unit price uh the per unit let me get the right see if i get the right financial terminology here the per unit total cost is right around four hundred and fifty dollars. So that doesn't. That's just construction and assembly. That's not marketing. That's not advertising. That's not packaging and shipping. That's none of that other stuff. Yeah, it wow. is, that is strictly <clears throat> parts and assembly. Yeah. Ooh. So if they sell it at five hundred, it's already a considerable loss. Probably. It's it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be close, right? It, it might break even at five. Um depending on how many units they sell, right? Well, not that, that, that doesn't work that way. That's not the way that works. But depending on how they do it, it it's possible. F5, if it really is going to cost 450 per unit, um, they, they alleged last time on the PS4 that they were making at launch $15 per unit sale. And that gave them a huge stock boon when they announced that, that they were making $15 per unit um, of profit because that doesn't happen with hardware, right? That, that, that's not the way hardware works. And they were a hundred dollars cheaper than the competition that launched at the same time. So, uh, that was, that was huge for them at the time. Uh, realistically, we're probably looking at both units being four ninety nine ninety nine. If they could get it down to 450 or 475, I think they would. But I don't know that they're willing to take the hit on it that maybe they would have been in the PS1, PS2 days. Yeah. Um. So. 
Yeah, they de definitely had more. <clears throat> I'd imagine there was more in the war chest back then. Yeah. Um, and and the the market was a, a friendlier place back then too. Yeah, it's never been I mean, a friendly place, but it was friendlier. <clears throat> um, I mean, look, look be honest. I mean, I'm gonna be honest here. I'm not even following the PS5 news because I'm probably not going to be getting one at launch. Oh, heathen. Yeah. Heathen! I know, I know. I mean, it's not... I mean, really, I've only bought... Well, the three... No. The three I didn't buy at launch. What did I? Wouldn't be surprising. Three was $600 and, you know... Oh, yeah, that's right. The three I definitely didn't buy at launch, and I think I pulled some shenanigans to get one. Like, I think I, like, I think I, like, bought it off somebody that, like, won one for free and didn't want it. <laughs> and they were just like, okay, I'll take, you know, $600 for it. That's what they are. And I'm like, no, you got it for free. I was like, I'm going to give you $400 for it. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to give you $400 because you didn't do anything and you're going to make $400. Exactly. And he's like, but there's $600. I'm like, well, then go sell it to somebody for $600. And then he couldn't find any buyers because they're like, well, I'll go to a store and get a warranty for $600. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Um, but oh, I, think, I think that's what I pulled for that one, but that wasn't like right at launch. The only one I actually, the only console I bought at launch was the PS4. I had to have that at launch. Yeah. Um, and the PSPs, but they're different. <laughs> You've bought every handheld that launch, haven't you? I mean, that's, that's, uh, you, had, you had a wonder swan for Pete's sake. In clear blue. <laughs> <sighs> I rushed my case. Um, <laughs> Well, no, in fact, I have two wonder swans. Yeah, I, I, I was going to leave that completely alone, but they, since you self-identified. <laughs> because there was the original black and white wonder swan. And then the wonder swan color. And then the wonder swan color. <laughs> so uh, the, the other things that have been going on around both the, both the consoles, uh, the coronavirus has been a consideration. There's uh, reports that certain uh, manufacturing uh, lines have been impacted by this, not because somebody thinks the virus is going to, you know, make it into the products and get shipped around the world or something, but that's actually affecting workforce uh, and and uh, logistics. So getting parts to places uh, and, and getting uh, assembly workers in there uh, has become difficult for certain assembly lines. Currently does not seem to affect either the Xbox One or uh, the PlayStation or the Xbox uh, Series X or the PlayStation 5, but it has actually impacted some of the things for Switch assembly lines. Uh, so they are probably going to not meet their hardware goal for this year. Odd for Nintendo to have an actual reason for not making hardware goals, but, you know, hey, <laughs> we'll, we'll, whatever has to happen every once in a while. They're probably, in the, they're probably in the back room going like, hey, we didn't have to make up lies this time. <laughs> exactly. This is sweet. <laughs> Uh, the RAM and, uh, flash storage that the devices are using, uh, is in direct competition with smartphones. So there's been some supply shortages, uh, or, or cost factors that were, are higher than they, they thought they were going to, they thought be able to get more of a discount on some of the internal components. So that hasn't quite worked out the way that they thought. And again, this is all coming out of, uh, financial reporting, which is public because they're a publicly traded company so uh we don't know exact details but this is what's being uh, put out in these reports so we still don't know a launch date we still are still assuming it's still going to be this year i've been thinking it could be as early as september a lot of people seem to be thinking it's going to be closer to december uh logic says that if they can't get it out by black friday then it'll leak into 2021 I don't, if they can't get the, it out before Black Friday, I don't see them launching it in 2020. Um, we don't look like we're going to get a February event. 
I'm thinking we might get a March event that ties into the conclusion of this player celebration. Could, what better way to celebrate the players than to give us details about the PS5? Woo, yeah. And we still might not get a price point because if they're legitimately going to play chicken with Microsoft on price point, we may not know the price of the unit till the day it drops. I, I, <laughs> it's like I'm going back to like the original, like... <clears throat> Remember, like, the whole, like, crap with the original Saturn and the PlayStation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and Saturn was just like, you know, we're going to be $400, and guess what? We're in stores now. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like, yeah, we're not ready. <laughs> yeah, I don't have $400 to just give you. Thank you for giving me no warning. And PlayStation goes, yeah, hi, uh, we're out next week, and we're going to be only $300. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Cut the knees right out underneath that one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and you have to remember, at the time, aside from the fact that the PlayStation had Final Fantasy VII, it was a huge unknown quantity. There was a there there was a certain excitement well, no. about it. And Final Fantasy VII wasn't a launch game. No, it wasn't a launch game, but it was the reason a lot of people even knew the PlayStation was a thing. Later, like early on, that was not a factor. Um, uh, okay, I guess it depends on the crowd, because in, when I was, we were, we were in college, and we were sitting around, and the day the article came out in EGM that the N64 was not going to have Final Fantasy, and they were jumping ship to this Sony PlayStation thing, that was like when the zeitgeist hit. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the wrong use of that word, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just talking about like the actual like when things were actually released, like what was going on. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think the, the game that everybody was talking about was the stupid battle arena to Sheedan, which was just like <laughs> hot garbage. I never actually played it. Uh, there, there, there's a game that people swear by and wonder why there has not been a sequel to, but I Because it was hot garbage. And like that was literally like it was just a bad time in gaming where like People just wanted like new 3D gaming, but just it was all really terrible. Well, yeah. I mean, they were still learning the rules of 3D gaming at that time. I mean, half yeah. of the launch titles for PS PlayStation weren't 3D titles or had some yeah. really bad 3D element to them. My yeah. beloved Wild Arms 4, the 3D aspects of that game are terrible, but yeah. I still love that game. Um, well, that's what that, and that's the thing was that really sunk the Saturn, especially like with the the added cost to it is because that system was only built for 2D initially. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end, they were just like, we have to add some stuff so we can do 3D yeah. too, because that's where this is going. <clears throat> that is the and, one thing PlayStation did that was kind of brilliant, is they, they set it up to be able to go either way. So you got things... Well... Uh, uh, mm, no? No. As far as like 2d games it really struggled because they didn't want to do it like for instance like the the capcom games um and because i was really into like capcom fighters back then Mm -hmm. the saturn had all the accurate ports to the game like i remember um initially uh dark stalkers was out on the playstation but the same week that that was released night warriors was released on the saturn which was the sequel to Darkstalkers. Right. And a much better game. Um, so, like, they were able to, like, handle that stuff. And then it got even worse with, like, you know, the other, like, when they did, like, X-Men versus Street Fighter. Um, yeah. Do you remember when that came out? Like, I had the, the, there was, like, an extra RAM cartridge for the Saturn because it was able to do that stuff. And it was just, like, an arcade perfect port, you know, of the game. Um like all the SNK games and everything that were out at the time were all perfect on the Saturn, but they struggled on the PlayStation. There was actually like a, an unwritten rule one time where they didn't want to, they didn't want to green like 2d games on the PlayStation because they just wanted to all go 3d because that was playing to its strengths. Yeah. True. And, and they were pushing, you know, the industry in that direction, right? Which was brilliant on their part. Right. I mean, you know, it's what they had to do, but, um, yeah. and it just really showed like that the Saturn just really struggled with 3d stuff. Yeah, I, I guess that's kind of yeah. Uh, they they yeah they 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 played to the different roles and on for better or for worse the the Saturns the the strengths they played to were the were the ones that were on the way out. 
Yeah. I mean, Saturn, I mean, Sega was just coasting on the Genesis and just assuming they could coast. I mean, just like everybody that's in that position where they're, you know, they do good at one thing and they just think they can coast and like, no, you can't, you know. They were just like, oh, we just need to make a better 2D system and uh, that's not where everything was going. Yeah. Should have known. I mean, which is really obnoxious because Sega was like probably at the forefront of doing that stuff, like Virtual Fighter, Virtual Cop, all that kind of stuff. Right, right. Like they knew, you know, where that stuff was going, but of course they were doing it with really expensive arcade stuff. Right. Um, I mean, but, if Nintendo is going to 3D, you, you have to kind of go, wait a minute, maybe we're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but that was really actually the, that was, Nintendo was still kind of forging ground at that point in time too. It's not till like post N64 that they really kind of were just like, no, 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 we're not, we're not cutting edge stuff. We're, we're, we're family comfort gaming company. Yeah. And I mean, if you really look at the N64, like, it's not like anything looked good on that thing. No. You know, I mean. They just they knew how to make a fun game, and that's Nintendo's bag, and that's how that's what allows them to get away with so many missteps that yeah. would sink anybody else. I, I think I still think there are uh, there is an amazing argument that I would wonder how much more money they would make if they had just said we're done after the N sixty four with hardware and just gone straight to developing software on other systems. I don't know. I don't know if there's, I mean, they would have kept the handheld market, right? Because they, they keep that, but I'm talking the, the, the TV console systems. I don't know. I don't know because they would have to, you know, develop for more than one or just claim exclusivity on one um, to, to keep the standards as high as they have, as, as high as they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't make a difference, but at the same time, you know, when they own the playground, they're able to do some different stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah. just like little touches. Like, <clears throat> I mean, there's little touches with stuff on on the Switch that just like, like damn, this, like the rumble is a little bit different than like the other systems, you right. know. Mm-hmm. I mean, but- I know it's like overall BS, but like you know, the HD rumble, you know, that they tout isn't used a lot, but when it's used well. Damn, it's good. Yeah, but even you know? then, they still they still two Legend of Zelda games on the system, and they've both had frame rate frame rate drops in them. I mean, and nobody cared. Oh, I cared every time I had to go in that dang forest. I cared. <laughs> I didn't spend a lot of time in that forest. I didn't either because it ran like butt. But the um, uh, but but still overall, like it did not affect. Like nobody was just like you know something, I would have played that game, but it wasn't for you know it wasn't for that part. Like no, no, no. it didn't, they, they, didn't they, matter. They, in the end. they get they get a pass on a lot of stuff because the overall effect of what they've got is is very very good, and yeah. and so they get a a lot of passes on things that other others wouldn't. But it is what it is. I mean they they do put out a, qual- a quality product by and large, and you know I want my Metroid. It's coming. Yeah, maybe someday, in a billion years. Um, oh, they're already. Well, wait. That's just a rumor. Never mind. Yeah. So, um, back to this. It's what What is it fusion. about? What is it about this player celebration thing that you don't like? I stopped reading after it was like you know, play games and get achievements. Oh, okay. So it's basically just you know the basic things that most people do in a day to day existence. You're just like, I don't do those things. I just don't like being told what to do. <laughs> okay, but what if you're just doing things and and getting just another little credit for it? You know. Now I know they want me to do that. Well, they've always wanted you to do it, and you've not done it. They've never said it. They've never said it. Yeah, not like that. Hmm. Like usually, I'm able to ignore because it it's like, ah, eh, each, you know, whatever. My trophies are there. Who cares? You know, it's not a big deal. This is just like, you get trophies. Otherwise, you're not a fan. 
That's you know not, something? That's not what this is saying. Okay, that is what it's saying. Okay, I thought this is without that. That that I, that thing says it's February eighteenth. February eighteenth is a sign up. The actual counting tracking doesn't start till February twenty fourth, which is Monday. Day. So yeah, so it hasn't two, actually yeah. started yet. Goal one is one hundred and twenty five thousand games played and fifty thousand trophies earned. That sounds ridiculous, but you have to remember there's 10 million plus of these things out in the wild. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, a lot of people in law systems. The the price for that is a exclusive PS4 static theme and an exclusive PSN avatar. Ooh. Goal two is 375,000 games played and the game, you have to play the game for an hour for it to count. Uh, it doesn't have to be an hour at one time, but it has to be a total of one hour. How many games? 375,000. Oh, never mind. So, I mean, everybody could be playing Horizon. And, you know, if 10 million people yeah. are playing Horizon, then that counts as 10 million games. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 1.5 million trophies earned. Oh, and by the way, you can only earn six trophies a day that count. If you earn more than six trophies a day, then the rest of them don't count. Uh, the award for that, if the, and, and everyone that participates gets these awards, it's not like you have to win or anything. Um, so it's five exclusive, five exclusive PSN avatar images again. Ooh. And goal three is 675,000 games played and 2.7 million trophies earned. The reward for that is an exclusive PS4 dynamic theme. Um, goals two and three start when the previous goal is met. Um, oh, and okay, this is all one thing. So I, I kind of said these like these were uh, a different thing. So the, the, there is one physical prize, which is the, the real life platinum trophy, a hundred dollar PlayStation store voucher and voucher codes for a selection of our greatest PS4 games, which, you know, you may or may not already own. Um, and this is going to end, so it starts on the 24th and it ends on March 17th um, at 11 a.m. Pacific, uh, at which time a, quest, uh, uh, a question will pop up on this webpage that you have to come in and answer. That's what enrolls you for the physical prize. So I've said a lot of wrong things, so let me summarize. <laughs> <laughs> there are three tiers of the yeah. challenge that start starting November 24th, running through March 17th. Uh, as each goal is reached, anyone that has participated for that goal will get the rewards, which are themes and avatars. Once the third goal, oh no, once March 17th is here, uh, going to the webpage, playstation.com slash player celebration, uh, there will be a question. You'll have to sign in with your PSN ID, answer the question, and that will enter you for the physical drawing. Yes. Okay. I think everything I said that time was right to the best of my knowledge. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it's so, you know, and you can go back to that page to track the progress of, of everyone and everything. So, so really your, your main complaint with this is just that the fact that they know that they're, that they're watching you, you, you just don't, don't like the fact that they're watching you. No, it's not the the fact that they're watching me. I have no problem with that. I mean, I know they do that. I mean, Nintendo data mines everything on the Switch. We got that. <clears throat> I think it's just the whole just against achievements. <laughs> it just really they make it a big that. deal. But so so <clears throat> I mean, you don't have to turn achievements. But I mean, it's just strictly playing. So let's just say you have absolutely no. Well, you turn off your I think you've turned off your notifications for trophies you have no caring you never sync your trophy log you don't know anything about it you still go in and you're playing games and they're games that you would play anyway and you get that counted toward this goal to help unlock something for the community does that bother you so like if they had never told you that this was happening and then they just said, oh, hey, we've been tracking everyone's playing hours for the last week. And because of all the time that you guys have put in on all these different games, we're going to give everyone who played in the last week this MacGuffin. Would that be offensive to you? Again, this is not really offensive. It's just I don't care. 
Well, yeah, the <laughs> fair. You don't have to care. I, I get <clears throat> that. Okay, I guess you 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 seem to be indicating earlier that you thought this was a terrible idea. So I guess I'm. I guess it's just like you know, but my my whole I <clears throat> not particularly like this in essence is a terrible idea, but just kind of like tying stuff like that to like achievements is. You know, it's just one of those things that's just like, you know, you reward people that like. So if, like, getting achievements the... does not make it any more likely that you get a prize than anyone else. It's right, not that, like... I get, that I get for this, but I'm okay. saying like, it kind of like opens the door, like, you know, for that kind of stuff where it's just like achievements then become like, you know, something for that. So like, if you don't have time, you know, to play a lot of stuff and get achievements, now, you're not going to be able to participate. Now, there is one thing I didn't state earlier that that probably should be acknowledged trophies for multiplayer modes of games count double okay that yeah i'm out see <laughs> but it like, doesn't yeah. gain you anything right it doesn't gain you anything that those count double all it does is get the entire community to the goal quicker you're not getting to that goal yourself you're getting to that goal by crowdsourcing your time and effort no, and that's my issue isn't with that my issue is saying that multiplayer gaming is worth more than me yeah, gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, I, I find that kind of crappy, but okay. I don't like devaluing my experience, <laughs> which may be even better and more appreciative on an artistic level for these games. I, a, I, I, you're, 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 yeah, I'm not going to argue you on that one. I think that's an interesting... No, I just want to try and sound as pretentious, pretentious as possible. Pretentious as possible, but you know, we, we know that the future currently is these persistent multiplayer games there are more now than ever people that play one game yeah, and it just it just it bums me out because like like if you if you're growing up on that you know playing games like that like there's a chance that years from now like right, for instance i now have a son he's no, four and a half years old we yeah. never talked about this before when i did know that happened four and a half years ago wow so i am sharing with him old games i played right and i'm like look you can and he can play them all and he can have fun with them and he can appreciate them and he can enjoy them some of them and then next week he's going to come home from preschool and he's going to say dad i heard about this fortnite game and it's awesome yeah. we we're have all to play fortnite we're all playing fortnite i'm like no you're not <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is like you know so like i can share like those old games with them What's he going to do with his kids? You know, if he's playing stuff like that, that is just no longer there and you have to have multiplayer player, like, hey, I used to play this game. Now you just can't anymore. Like, I don't know. That, that depresses me. Yeah, that is. Was... Back in my day, I played on the Fortnite. I was a Fortnite champion. It's just, yeah. I mean, is it not depressing? That... It, it, uh, yeah. I'm having a lot of fun, We, we agree with you that uh, we... We like our solo player uh, story-driven <laughs> games. And then, and, and, yeah, you, you're not a good representation of your peer group, Keegan, because you, you had me. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm talking about, like, you and me. I was talking right. about. No, I know. But <laughs> as, as existing in that peer group, you know yeah. you're an anomaly, right? Yes. So what being in a college with people who are under different influences and, and come up against, what do you, what do you see – um, I can't phrase the rest of the question, but do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, you know, I don't really see anyone. I, I among my friend groups and stuff, the most uh, the most uh, multiplayer game that I see playing is Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> okay, your your entire friend group is an anomaly. We'll just we'll just call it that. Um, but I mean, what do you what do you think of a of a thing like this, Keegan? Where where you're going to you know you sign up, you do you do voluntarily sign up to have your data aggregated into this this kind of. I think it's kind of cool. It's a cool way to get these kind of cool little uh, things to put on your uh, screen. <laughs> yeah, the problem with avatars is is I'm really hard pressed to let go of Sly Cooper because because yeah. he's a raccoon and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. 
I switch themes like every other week. You you know yeah. that. every every time you look, I've got a different theme up. So you know that's not a big deal. But yeah. avatars for me, just I I really mm-hmm. have a hard time letting go of that Sly Cooper. I, it just goes with you. It's you and Raccoon. It's you and Sly. It is. It's, just, it's, it's, it's yeah. It would be wrong if it wasn't. It, it, it does. I've, I've changed it a couple of times. I'm just like, no, no, this feels wrong. Even when it was overwritten with the Facebook icon, when it had the Facebook integration there, Sly was still there in the background smiling at me. Um, <laughs> and all was right with the universe. Um, still sad that we never got that Rainmaker Sly movie. Because the Ratchet and Clank movie did not do well. Yeah, that's a shame. But I never saw that Ratchet and Clank movie. Was it was it that bad? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good. But it wasn't that bad. It's just kind of one of those enjoyable sit down watch. Yeah. Don't it, think much about it. Yeah, def- you, know, you you pop your bowl of popcorn, you turn your brain off, and ninety minutes later you're done. Yeah. And you're like, well, that was kind of fun. I guess it hurts because like the games had such good. Yeah fun writing yeah Mm -hmm. and there is some of that there i mean there are moments where it feels incredibly ratchet and clank and then there's the rest of the movie oh that's true you should still watch it though because that would be it would be good because because you're even more of a of a ratchet and clank head than i am so it'd be it'd be interesting to get your take on it yeah that's that's why i can't believe i haven't actually i think i didn't want to be disappointed so i kind of like shied away from it yeah, but we have those two games that came from the North Carolina studio, so the sheen's already kind of, you know, gone a little bit. Which ones are you talking about? Uh, All for One and what was that Tower Defense one? It was basically designed to be a multiplayer game. Oh, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are the two I didn't play. Yeah. All for one, the kids played, and they actually <clears throat> didn't mind it so bad. It, it it worked for them, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I can't remember what that other one was called. It was like it like was a non double entendre. Yeah, title. like they just messed everything up on that one. Yeah. Was it up your arson? No, that's no, that's a court, that that's a court title. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. That was a uh, that was the third one, wasn't it? Yeah. I- think so going commando yeah, yeah up your arsenal. i think i was just yeah. thinking of the multiplayer version of that one with was it deathlock that you're talking about no no that, not deadlock 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 that was just the that arena battle mode but this yeah. one was actually specifically set up like it was supposed to be multiplayer it was download only i can see the screen splash on the ps3 for when you hovered over the icon but i cannot think of what it was called i don't remember this one yeah, I, I think I fired it up once and said nope, and never fired it up ever again. Um. Okay, so I think we've we've milked that 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 post to death there. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm fading. So just I got a little uh, bit. Just a couple more things. Uh, there is a there's a promo image out there that uh, claims that the storage size of Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, is 100 gigabytes. I'm not going to say that that's terribly outside of the realm of reason but it also could have just been a placeholder data element um so we don't know yet that's going to be a heck of a download but i mean it's still smaller than you know red dead redemption 2 and nobody seems to give a rat's patootie about how much that took to download and install so uh yeah if you still if you only have a 500 gig stock drive that that's a significant chunk of your drive um but uh yeah let's see what you see what you do uh, for me it's not really a concern because i i have a sizable external hooked up to it mm-hmm. but uh i might actually install this one on the internal storage um just cuz but yeah we'll see um no man's sky is still out there making me feel terrible that i'm not playing it uh, the latest update 2.3 that just dropped this week is called the living ship update. And, uh, as it sounds like uh, a lot of the, com- a lot of the stuff that came with it is for organic ships. So you can find these new exotic, uh, organic ships that you can grow and raise and, uh, set up and then fly off into space with. And they have uh, different internal visuals, uh, different external visuals, different capabilities. They have a whole different, uh, element and uh, can uh, 
uh, crafting path for them. Um, so yeah, and there's a bunch of other perks and updates and stuff in there too. If you want to check it out, uh, it's no one game I do want to just go back and like try and start over again and see if I can. Yeah, because the game has added a lot at the base it's still the same game and play the same but they've added a lot to it that could that covers more of what people were originally expecting yeah and and i mean i you know i went back and started it up after the the last big update so that would have been the 2.0 uh i forget what that one was called was that the nexus don't remember um and yeah it, it was it was fun and i liked a lot of the improvements and uh i didn't start over because i have a multi-tool that is the only one of its type that i have ever seen and i refuse to give that multi-tool up um but it uh you know it, it did a lot of cool things it did there's a lot of better stuff there there was also that one floor of the space station that Mark fell through a thousand times. And, um, you know, so there's still some chank in there, but they did a lot. And, you know, everything's more varied. Everything's looks better. Most things run a lot better. You can do legit multiplayer if you want. Um, I did do that with Mark for a bit after that update and it worked fine. It worked great. Um, you know, and it actually kind of helps cause you know, if you are, uh, resource farming the more people you have to do the ref- resource farming the the better off you are mm-hmm. um uh but overall yeah at the core it's still the same game so if if the whole idea of the game itself is just abhorrent to you you're abhorrent to you you're you're not going to like it but it is a game that has against all odds gotten a lot better and mm-hmm. It, like I said, it makes me feel guilty about not playing it. Yeah, it's one of those games that you feel like now you have to go back and play because you have to experience it at its after it's improved itself. Because it didn't just decide to sit down and and die. Just stop. It it decided to get back up and improve. It, it's it's like the the meme. Uh, if you can't handle me at my, you don't deserve me at my. You know, if you yeah. can't handle me, couldn't handle me at my 1.0, you don't deserve me at my 2.3. Um, but, uh, yeah, even, even Dave wants to play this. So that, that kind of, that kind of tells you the sound yeah, that this game has gone through. I mean, I was excited, like, you know, when it first came out, you know, and stuff. <clears throat> and I started playing it and I, I hit the lottery, you know, when I first started. <laughs> Toxic yeah. planet, no resources for fuel, and uh, no shelter. Just aggressive. It was like a super aggressive planet, and I just like, like I do was just like I jump out of my ship for five minutes, and oh look, I'm going to die. Jump back to my ship and just kind of, you know, curl a ball and cry. <laughs> so there was a lot of that early on. I don't need that kind of realism in my game. <laughs> <laughs> you curl up into a ball and cry in the real world plenty. You didn't need that. Yeah, I was like, anymore. this is what I do on a normal day. <laughs> I don't need this in my video games. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> so, Sony has canceled their PlayStation appearance at PAX East. Uh which, you know, was where they were supposed to be first public playing of The Last of Us Part Two demo. So that's hmm. not going to happen. None of the Sony uh, stuff that was coming with PlayStation will be at PAX East uh, over concerns of the coronavirus. I I honestly don't know what they're... I, I guess it's just, just the, that many people Probably. all congregating. We're, we're worried about, you know, herd communicability. Uh, yeah, so... Interesting that that's had that level of impact for that. I said that a lot there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, as far as we know, no one else has pulled out over similar concerns. But uh, that was not a thing I was expecting. I mean, you always hear about convention bug, right? You know, you go to convention, you get sick because you're rubbing up against people that... Yeah, they're, they're terrible as it is. Yeah, so... 
I, I get I get it, but it's still kind of surprising that they mm-hmm. that they pulled that. Uh, but yeah. I think they're just looking for an excuse. They really don't seem to want to go to anything right now. No, and I no, think no. The par- part of it is probably they don't want to do all the interviews. That's going to ask, when are we going to know more about the PS5? And when are we going to know how much it costs? And they're going to yeah. drop if the same PR lines that they've been dropping for forever. And Yeah, if they're not showing that stuff, they're not going to want to deal with it. I mean, honestly, come on. Who wants to deal with that stuff anyway? It's a hassle. <laughs> it's a drain of money. I mean, that stuff probably... What? I mean... The cost of that would probably be like what half a mil, you know, to get everything set up and ready and all that kind mm-hmm. of. Stuff. That's all probably total. the direct cost, and there's probably another half mil in indirect cost. Yeah, so it's just like that's a drain. Like, who wants that? Who needs that? Mm-hmm. And we I are, don't blame them. And we are going more and more to uh, the the direct world, right? You know, that's that's what more and more people want to do is just do these, you know, owner controlled events, whether they're virtual or real. And uh, it's not only that, but more just often, like... and so the, the yeah, it's just cheaper and easier for them, and people can get information quicker and, and better control. Because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, these things are not exactly like like people just get off on being jerks, you know, about yeah. the stuff, yeah. So, like, you know. If they're showing off a demo of a game and something glitches, they're going to be like, ugh, worst thing ever, you know, all that kind of right. stuff. You know, it's just like, the, it, it's just like everything, you know, it's that mentality of everything, like everybody just needs to crap on everything, and it's just right. a cool thing to do. Yeah, and, and it, it eliminates like, the gaff pot potential and, you know, the, oh yeah, the, the live playing of... Uh, Uncharted Four, when your character just freezes when it enters a yeah. room. <laughs> Oops. Oops. But, yeah. So I, I can't think of. <laughs> after talking about this, I can't think of a reason why they would even want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we started off with the uh, Nvidia GeForce Now, and we're going to end with the Nvidia GeForce Now. Uh, they're losing publishers. So uh, Activision and Bethesda have both pulled out of the, their support for the NVIDIA GeForce Now. Uh, the NVIDIA GeForce Now has basically no games natively. You have to sign in with your Steam library, and it allows you to stream games that you own in your stream, Steam library. So as, as developers pull out of support for that, they're just they're, they're bleeding games. So, uh, yeah. Future's not looking so bright for that. Uh, Stadia's probably looking better, but they've not been getting games into that system, into that ecosystem like they were hoping for either. So <laughs> looks I'm like sure. streaming games might be still a little ways further off. So glad I canceled that. What was I thinking? I, I, I still kind of wish you would have got it just so we could listen to you complain about the fact that you have this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, and look at it. Look at okay, this. Okay. Even... All right. There, there. There. There is. Were you getting? You were getting the blue controller, weren't you? So there is one thing. <laughs> one thing where you you resist the controller. Well, no. <laughs> if you looked at the controller, it was like a dark navy kind of blue. Right. Oh, that's more resistible. Yeah. God. Like if they would have made it like electric blue, or God forbid, translucent blue. We would have been. That would, would have bought. Over. It. I would have still had it. <laughs> you could have taken the easy out. Yeah, he, would have, he no. would have canceled his subscription, but he still would have had the controller. No, we've been drinking, so we're going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, I have kept you here for almost two and a half hours. I appreciate you hanging out with me on this evening, uh, talking to our folks. Uh, not a lot of action in the chat room tonight. You know, that's okay. fine. That happens. <laughs> it's, it's you know, it's Friday night. People got places to go and things to do. You can... They're like, what, no Dave and Mark fighting? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... It's this I... kumbaya horse crap. <laughs> now, I do not have the outro for this well thought out or written down so i apologize to anyone i miss i do not have the patreon list so i cannot thank everybody by name but thank you thank you thank you to the patreons 
uh, Patreon supporters, to our patrons who go to patreon.com slash gamers ledge and donate to our are bringing you the content that we do. I know Mark is uh, bringing a lot of wrestling stuff out, our bi-weekly Gamers Ledge podcast, which we're doing right now, and the other content. Um, I do want to step up my content contribution. Uh, we haven't quite figured out how to make that work yet. So, uh, I, I did lay the seeds of a potential something today, so we'll see if that bears fruit or not. Uh, but we'll, 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 we'll keep you abreast on what's going on there. Um, so thank you again to all the patron patrons. If you are interested in supporting us at any level, visit patreon.com slash gamers ledge. Uh, I'd say visit the website, but we've been really bad about updating that too. So, uh, it's not good to not promote your own stuff, but I also don't want to promote bad outdated <laughs> stuff. So, you know, tell me to get off my dead butt and update the website a bit more often. And, and then would be something to go visit. Um, what else does he normally do here? Uh, oh, we're, we need to do closing thoughts. Uh, we won't do words of wisdom because I'm not going to look up a joke to tell because I'd have to find a good one. Um, so I guess we are to the point of closing thoughts. Mr. Dave, you laid down. So before you pass out, do you have a thought with which you would like to close the show? Um. I'm just going to say, hold on, I'll get up. <laughs> I'm just going to say, bring on that. I'm ready for Animal Crossing. And I, I got a little, I got a little sad today because I realized it's still like a month away. Do you think they did that direct too soon? No, I think they did it just the right time to like, you know, finally build up buzz and like they needed to give information for the game. I mean, but still, at the end of it, it's just like, ah, oh, now I still got to wait a month. <laughs> so. A little sad. Keegan? All thoughts are final. Our thoughts, thoughts are final. <laughs> All thoughts are final. There are no exchanges or returns on your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> no exchanges on refunds. Too. So I just playing with words. <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, final thoughts. Final thought. <laughs> well, I will give a final thought and give you a second to see if you can come up with something. Okay. Um, if, like me, you completely missed the fact that the pre-orders for Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker physical movie copies had gone out, um, <laughs> go out and grab it before it sells out if you're interested in any of the store exclusive ones like i get the best buy steel books um so yeah i managed to still get a pre-order in before those sold out uh and maybe it won't sell out because who knows i don't understand if people like hate love whatever star wars anymore but uh they hate it i agree there's nothing but articles about how people hate star wars well yeah articles lie <clears throat> they like it um, so yeah, uh, episode nine, we could talk about sometime. We probably should talk about sometime. Maybe we did already talk about it sometime, but anyway, I forget. Uh, so yeah, uh, go out there and get your orders in. Um, and, uh, I got all the comics sorted. So I now understand what the level of task I have ahead of me is. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, Keegan, you can talk about uh, Marvel Comics Unlimited. Oh, yeah. So I've been uh, reading uh, the Spider-Man comics from the beginning. Oh, yeah, like, you said you were doing that. The, literally, <laughs> the beginning. Amazing Fantasy 15, like, the That's beginning. That's a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's on issue 12 of volume one. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what was that, the... I, I think that is actually 60s, right? exactly where I am. <laughs> I think that's what I saw last time I was in there. That's from the 60s, right? That's when yeah. Spider-Man started? Yeah. And they, and they did a lot in in between then and now. Yes. <laughs> I know. I have a long way to go. <laughs> I mean, that's 60 years. <laughs> And that's just if you're reading Amazing. That doesn't take into account all of the 
other titles that have come along the way. And yep, 12 was Web literally of... the last one I read. Hey, Volume yeah. 12. What, what are all the other ones? Because they were Spectacular. Spectacular, were... Sensational, Web. Yeah, web ad- of Adjectiveless, time. Scarlet, Spider. Um, Adjectiveless, that was the McFarlane run, right? That was the McFarlane, yeah. Yeah. Then Ultimate, if you want to go that far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all of Which, the mini series, maxi series, friendly uh, neighbor, friendly neighborhood Spider Man's one they've done two I wanted, of recently. I wanted to read just the Ultimate run, <laughs> and when I looked into that, I was just like, "Oh wow, it's huge!" <laughs> I own the entire Ultimate run. That is one of my few proud things I can say about my yeah. collection is I own the entire Ultimate run. I mean, that's a lot just in that. I didn't realize how. Yeah, that's a box and a half by itself. For some reason, because when I when I got into the Ultimates universe, it was just like. Uh, did it start as that, like, kind of Avengers, Avenger, Avengers ish book? The Ultimate, Ultimate? Yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of the start. Yeah, there was like two volumes of that, and I just thought it was all kind of like that. There's like these collections of like you know limited series, and then like no, Ultimate Spider-Man was like a whole thing. I'm like, yeah. oh, crap. And, and something interesting that I've seen, I, I'm not sure if it's just how it's formatted. But for some reason, it a, takes a lot more concentration to read the, the comics than it does to read the manga I read on my phone. I, I think it's just, I think the, the comic books are zoomed out more, so it's harder, it takes more effort to actually read the words. Oh, so you're thinking it's just a uh, app function issue. Yeah, where I feel like if they zoomed in more, so... Yeah, I try. I don't do the, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, Where it zooms it? around the page. Yeah, I don't do that because oh. that just. Well, yeah. The, well, no, you're talking. No, that that's your problem. Why right? wouldn't you do that? You're, that's you're like looking, the whole purpose. You're looking at a manga. I can't do my hands. You're looking at a manga page, which the format for is typically like this. They're like yeah, so it's cams, very different. And you're going size. to a comic, which is a you know a magazine sized page. Yes. So yeah, and, and it's. it's yeah, they just they have to zoom it out more so the words are smaller and yeah, and, uh, that that dynamic mode is actually pretty good. So you might yeah. might want to consider actually okay. using. Okay, I just I like seeing the more zoomed out, but well, once, I guess you're, I done, don't, once you're done you with can, the page, it zooms out so you see all the panels. Yeah. Okay, and stuff. it's I found reading them to be really good with that. Like they they really they it's well thought out. Like it's it's planned. Okay, maybe I should start use doing that then. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, looking looking forward to you know maybe picking up some some things that I didn't want to read enough to buy, but you know can can zoom through on that. Uh, I do need to have find I need to get a tablet or something to do it though because it's kind of a pain in the butt on the computer and my phone is too small because I'm old and my eyes hurt. I highly recommend the. Uh wait for a sale on Amazon devices and get a fire tablet, 10 inch. The last time I got one for like 70 bucks or something, if that nice. And they're, you know, they're perfect for consuming. Yeah. Are those locked to the Amazon store or do those have play store on them too? Yeah. You can download different apps on them. I uh, will actually, most of the apps are, should be available on there. Okay. Like I mean, yeah. I have I have the DC Universe one on there, so I read like comics through there and stuff. So right, you know, it's you know, I'm sure they got the Marvel Unlimited on it. Mm-hmm. So all right, cool. I'll have to check that out. All right, well, I think we well and uh, overdone the final thoughts there. That was that was a uh, actually very robust final thoughts. Yeah. So again. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys. Uh, Dave, you're like an honorary Midwesterner. You can't shut up like we can't. So um, <laughs> thank you guys for being on tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you to our, our patrons again and to all of you watching out there, whether it's live or, or on demand, I guess Is that what we call it. I don't know. I'm not young and hip. I don't know. <laughs> Even when I was young, you know, I wasn't hip. So that that's no different. It's, whatever. Um, but anyway, 
Uh, again, I'm Matt, and on behalf of Dave and Keegan and those of the cast not able to join us tonight, one because he's doing college work and one because he has human responsibilities that adults have. Thank you. Good night. Good morning. What was that line from? Uh, what was that? Good evening, good morning, and good night. If I don't see you, what was that? The, the Jim Carrey movie where he was the Truman Show. I don't know. Good evening. Good morning. Yeah, there was a whole. He went through a whole thing. It was a anyway. See ya. Bye. Game on. Game on. That's that. Game on. There you go.